And that's why the Easter Bunny ain't going to make a peep this year. Hey, guys, we're live. How's it going? <laughs> Not too nerdy. How you been this week? Good, good, man. Everything's good. Playing a lot of different games and just having fun. Awesome. COD made player, how you doing? I've actually been getting back into Call of Duty after like three months of not playing it. So Really? Are you I'm enjoying it? Or are you... Actually, I've been getting my ass kicked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to come back, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Not a forgiving place. Beastly Gamer, how you doing? Real good. Now I'm wondering, because he hasn't been uh, playing Call of Duty, do we start calling you Hello Kitty Made Player? <laughs> um, I've been uh, chilling, man. I've been playing a little bit of Battlefield. I went on to play some Resident Evil Six. We talked Are you about that last on the PlayStation Four. Yeah, it's been it's. I've got no problems out of it. I played about ten games today, and uh, it was fucking awesome. I really enjoyed that game. I'm trying to get Kate to start to play it, but yeah, I've been really enjoying that. It was so a Call I, of Duty, of course. I thought we'd change up the format a little bit this week and start with kind of a what you've been playing segment. And uh, basically, since you just started talking about Resident Evil and Battlefield 4, why don't you get started? Resident Evil 6, I, uh, Kate and I, we, we played that together. And uh, we went through Leon's uh, campaign together. Then we went through Chris uh, Redfield's campaign. But we never uh, played with Wesker's son. I forget his name. And the reason we stopped playing it, we bought this game. We were there at the midnight release for this game. We were so excited. And, but it was a big letdown. It, it seemed like they forgot what they wanted to be, uh, and they mm -hmm. lost touch with reality. And it became just an epic, epic action game with huge set pieces. And by the, the end of the second act with Chris Redfield, I was deflated. I was like, man, this is not Resident Evil. This right. is high impact, running around, punching people in the neck. It just didn't feel the same. And so we quit. We hadn't played that game for over a year. And last week when we, we talked about Resident Evil, um, we had a, a little topic on it and basically what had happened to the series and what I would do to change it, I decided to go on in and give it a shot, and uh, much to my dismay, I still don't like it. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, that's how I feel about Resident Evil right now. Ho hopefully Capcom can dig down deep to the roots of what made that game great to begin with and uh, turn it around for, for the gamers out there. Now, Battlefield 4 has had a lot of issues, we all know that, across the board. Um, and uh, I wanted to just play something different. I was uh, making some footage for some of my videos this weekend, and uh, I played a little bit of Killzone, Shadowfall. Didn't like that as much. It feels very weighted. You know, you feel heavy playing that game. Like and, Halo uh, stuck in the mud. That's what yeah. I would call it. And uh, I'm really starting to feel myself in Call of Duty now. I mean, I'm really enjoying that. I don't think... I Honestly, I played Black Ops 2 this weekend, too, and then I looked at Kate and I said, I like Ghost more than this. I, and... Don't tell anybody. Don't, don't say don't that aloud on the don't internet. Tell anybody, don't tell anybody I said that. And that's uh, when Briar Rabbit just got 40 dislikes. <laughs> you know, um, the, the funny thing is, uh, I like the levels in, um, in, in Call of Duty Black Ops 2 more than in Ghost, but I got so used to playing Ghost over the last few months. Going back to it, just it took me out of that element. All of a sudden, I felt like a noob again. Yeah. And I'm sure, I'm sure that if I, if I play the game a little bit more, but then I, I did plug in my uh, DualShock 4 into the PS3, and I changed the uh, control scheme to, to tactical, and it felt just like Ghosts, and I ran around killing people. But yeah, I've been playing Ghost, Battlefield, Resident Evil. Uh, I've been playing that PC game, the He-Man indie game. You guys should check that out, too. It's pretty fun. Yeah? And, uh, yeah, it's awesome. I made a video on it. What, and, oh, I didn't see it. What, what's that game about? It's, do you remember the original He-Man cartoon? Yeah, the cartoon from the 80s. Like the... It is that yeah. game. It's, it's an indie game. It's free, and uh, there's a link in the description of the video that I made. But it, he's taken all the animation from that show, and uh, there's He-Man in the game, the Sorceress. These are all playable characters. It's a four-player arcade experience, or you can do versus modes. Is it like it's, the X-Men arcade game? Yes, or It's yes. like a beat-em-up? Oh, yes. that's cool. He-Man's in it. The Sorceress is in it. Orko is in it. Tila's in it. Man at Arms is in it, uh, Ram Man's in it, and Lionel from Thundercats. Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> and, um, yeah, when I saw this game, I, I had to give it a shot and play it. The control scheme seemed weird at first, but after a while you get used to it. I really enjoyed it, and I implore you all to check it out if you get I heard it's, uh, it's not done yet, right? The person's still working on it? No, it's in beta right now. Beta, yeah. and, and the guy who uh, who's making the game, he's accepting... Uh, uh, Basically, people are telling him what they want to see in the game the most, which characters from that era, what type of super moves uh, to see. Because if you guys remember, uh, He-Man, whenever he'd fight enemies, he'd grab them and spin them around and throw them real far. 
<laughs> that's his, that's his super move, and uh, I play with well, him. I, I, I don't believe him. that the cartoon is canon. I only go by the movie starring Dolph Gun- Lundgren. Get out of here with that! <laughs> Eating fucking uh, beef ribs. Get get lost. <laughs> that that movie hurt my feelings, man. <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie. I know what you're talking about, man. It's a good movie. <laughs> oh, God. What are you going to say next? Mario Brothers is canon, too? Dude, I actually like that movie. <laughs> no! That was the worst. That's honestly, for me, the worst video game to movie conversion I've ever seen in my life. Do you remember the Goombas? These big giant guys my size with a head this big on top? Yeah. Oh, the Goombas? You remember Yoshi from Jurassic Park? They killed that movie. Dude, remember? He's like, how many Marios are there? He's like, I'm Luigi Mario, and he's Mario Mario. <laughs> <laughs> that was your last name? Oh, my God. Mm. John, John Leguizamo, yeah. At least he bounced back from that. Oh, my goodness. So this can't be licensed, right? It's, they didn't go... Is it Hanna-Barbera that had the He-Man? Yeah, Hanna-Barbera was the He-Man cartoon. So uh, is this licensed, or is this somebody just kind of... like? Not hopefully licensed. nobody noticed. Well, I'm, I'm sure people have noticed... Um, it's it, and it's wide open. I mean, it's actually on a rep. I'm, for, I'm trying to remember the website. It's on. Um, it's it's linked in my video. You guys check out the video. All right. But um, I don't know if it's licensed or not. But it, it's actual. You know, the the cutscenes and stuff are from the cartoon. How's uh, it play? Is it like as good as Streets of Rage? It's good as Final Fight? It's, it's good it's as not, It's not. It's not uh, that finely tuned. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the, the the enemies, the AI isn't that smart. It's it's basically just a nostalgia trip, mm-hmm. but but it serves its purpose. You know, it's not so. If, if you got um, Alien vs Predator, or if you got um, X Men or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, if you got any of those games, you're gonna play those first for sure. Those well, I'd like to like, be able to call in Voltron as a kill streak. <laughs> a kill streak. Yeah. <laughs> I can say it. See, like. Yeah, so- it, it's not licensed, I heard, but like the thing is, the person has in their favor is that it's free. Mm-hmm. So it's free, they're not charging, and I mean, it could always be shut down, but at least it's free. And when someone sees it's free and they're not charging it, usually they let it go because it's like it's not bringing down like what He Man was or anything. So yeah. if we get real lucky, maybe uh, somebody who owns the license will say, hey, why don't we give you a little money and make this a real game? Make some money uh, off of it. That would be awesome, sure. man. Yeah. Yeah, well, that'd be I mean, cool. graphically, it's not really a dated game. Of course, the characters look the same way they did back in the cartoon, but um, the levels, the uh, the 3D objects that come at you, like there's boulders and stuff and snakes that come out of the ground, it looks really well done, hand-drawn characters. That, I mean, I really like it. So I beat it, and then once you beat it, it says to be continued. That's when you get to Skeletor. Then you get to play Thundar. Thunder. <laughs> who, who remembers Brave Star? Am I the only one who remembers that cartoon? I think you just made that up. <laughs> Got me. Cod made player, what have you been playing this week? Uh, I'm actually been trying to get the paper trails on um, Infamous Second Son to work, but it's not working for some reason. Every time it, uh, I go to do the next mission, it keeps telling me to go to the online and make sure I look at my evidence and stuff, and I do that like 100 times and it doesn't fix anything. And I've been getting back into Ghost a little bit, getting my ass kicked. Before you move on to Ghost, no. you guys have been playing Infamous a lot, both of you and Not Too yes. Nerdy. And yeah. I'm surprised because that's a single-player game, and you guys have been playing it. When did that come out? It came, came out, out in March, right? Yeah. March, yeah. March 21st. So it's a month, a full month, and you guys have been playing it for a full month. I'm surprised. That game seems to have longer legs than I expected it to. Yeah, as long as, as long as you do like the paper trails and stuff like that, and all the side missions. I mean, there's plenty to do in the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Kame. If you go through uh, my my walkthrough, I walk through how to do the paper trails because like a lot of this stuff is like the thing is this. Like, it's very difficult when you get to when you collect the clues in the game. That's the easy part. When you go back online, there's little things you have to catch in order to move on to the next part, and yeah. they're not very detailed at all. They don't say anything. Like, they literally just leave you there and figure out the clues. It might be, like, a certain website that's in, like, a paper that you're reading, and you have to know to go to that website because they made up a fake website. So, like, you go to that website, and then on that website, you, you might see numbers on a page, and you're like, oh, well, there's 11 digits. You have to go to the DUP intranet. And you go to their website, you type in those 11 digits, and it brings you to, like, a whole nother section. Like, it's literally, like, you're investigating everything. Yeah. And there's even one section that has, like, uh, it looked like an origami dove with dots. Yeah. But like, it, I sat there for like 15, 20 minutes, and I finally figured out that they want you to connect the dots. 
and when you connect the dots, it made individual numbers, and then it'll give you numbers, and then once you get those numbers, you get to the next section. And, like, I show, like, the whole walk. I finish every part up to part five. It's finished. So, like, I'm waiting for the last part, which I think is part six that comes in this Friday or next Friday. But it's very hard. I'm not going to lie. Like, there will be times I'm sitting there for, like, 20 minutes just staring at the screen trying to figure out what to do. Yeah. I mean, it was really sorry to piss me off, so I just, like, you know, turned off my PlayStation because I couldn't figure it out. I was just I kept going back to the website because that's all it was telling me, you know, just go look at your evidence, and that's what I kept doing. I was like, what the hell? That's what I'm doing. So I thought it was broken, and I just heard playing Ghost and haven't played that in a while, so I've been getting my ass kicked at Call of Duty quite a bit. You playing and, the DLC or are you playing the standard maps? Uh, I've been doing a lot of uh, game battles. Oh, really? You yeah. got a team that you're playing with? Uh, no, they're uh, I'm trying to get recruited by a team. Oh, really? Yeah. You want to uh, say what team or just any team? Just any team for right now. Um, yeah? I'm playing like a lot of search and destroy, and that's pretty fun. I'm doing pretty good on that, but when it comes to like domination and shit, I'm getting my ass kicked. And then... Um, Battlefield 4, I played like one or two games and both of them crashed. I mean, so I'm still having problems with Battlefield 4. It's still crashing. Oh, wow. yeah. And uh, actually, I bought an Xbox 360 again so I can actually play GTA 5. I've been playing that a little bit. I it's might hope somebody it. won't release the next gen version. Yeah. <laughs> that that <Assholes>. damn Rockstar. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I know we were talking about what the games we play, but I'd like to just bring this news out real quick because I'm pretty sure we can. Blow through it real quick. Um, Watch Dogs coming to the Wii U this fall. I think that's awesome. Yeah, it's more people who get to play it, the better off everybody is, right? Yeah. Ubisoft gets to make a little more money. That yeah. was the game that uh, 9 to 5 said definitely wasn't coming. See, that you got to be an optimist some, sometimes. Yeah, I mean, it's, it was put on their website, the uh, Ubisoft's website, that they were going to release it this fall. And I think this game's obviously going to be one of the top selling games of this year because it's coming out for the PS3, Xbox 360, PS4, Xbox One, PC, and the Wii U. And my store alone in my little city has 700 pre-orders. That's the biggest 700 pre pre-orders. Wow. Yeah. They said that's the biggest pre-order they've ever had. They said like uh, when GTA 5 came out at their store, they had like uh, 400 and something. Watch Dogs, they have over 700. So I think this game's going to do really good when it drops uh, the 27th. See, wow. the thing I'm curious about is we know, like, the Wii U version, obviously the graphics aren't going to be the best, but yeah. the thing is, though, when you're talking about hacking into different things, that gamepad might actually come in a lot handy. Like, yeah. it would be pretty handy and stuff like that. To have a second screen and do different things on the go, that might actually work very well. I mean, it's a shame that we know the graphics aren't the best, but I'm sure that that gamepad, they're going to use it. That's why it's delayed. They're going to use it for something crazy. I'm yeah. sure they'll be as good as the 360 and the PS3 version. Yeah, it might be. It actually might be better than those, you know. But it won't be on par with the the next, well, the current gen consoles yeah. because uh, the Wii U does have the power of the PS3 and the Xbox 360. Yeah, I don't it's, think the multiplayer would be too good though on the Wii U. What was the other Ubisoft game that the stealth game? What's it called again? The one that they brought out. Splinter Cell. Oh, stealth game. Splinter Cell. Uh, the Splinter Cell edition for Wii U was really good too. I don't know if you guys seen that. Like the, the, stuff, the stuff you could do with the gamepad, like worked well. So that's what I'm saying. Like Ubisoft already has experience of using that gamepad well to help in the game. So I think Ubisoft's gonna make a lot of money this year. Period. I mean, they've come out with so many games and they're coming out with more. So I don't know. They're on the right ball. You know, they got them all lined up and people are actually buying them. So I think they're doing pretty good this year. I honestly can't wait for Watch Dogs, guys. Uh, not too often, especially in this day and age with this generation of, of consoles, do you get excited when you see something that's graphically a powerhouse. But when I saw that game, the last uh, trailer they released for the PC version of that game, I've never seen an open-world game visually as beautiful and as stunning as that game. I, can't, I absolutely can't wait. That's day one for me for sure. What happened to Briar Robert? He fell. Oh, you, <laughs> <laughs> you guys hear that uh, Watch Dogs got re-rated? Yeah, it did. They changed uh, some of the content. It, the, the rating was the same, but they changed like yeah. uh, like sexual content to or brief nudity to nudity and like sexual content to sexual explicit scenes or something like that. Yeah, I guess all that changed from uh, November, uh, November of last year till now. They put like more tits and stuff into it. Awesome. Well, they I had that one video, that one trailer. They didn't have like women all over in the screens. Didn't you see that one trailer? They had there's like a whole bunch of women, like they look like they weren't wearing clothes. 
Like, yeah, that, that's what it out. is, and then there's like a lot of sex scenes and yeah, uh, stuff so like that in the game, so I don't know. Literally, there's one scene in the trailer, it has like about 50 screens in the background, all of them had different women, and they all look like they're pretty much topless, so I'm just saying. <laughs> just <laughs> let you know what's going on in that room. I'm, Rock I'm, I'm, I'm guessing I'm gonna this check is... that out when I get the game. I'm guessing this is day, day one, huh? Not too nerdy? Yes, yeah, sir. It's a, it's a PC <laughs> day one for me. <laughs> He wants now, to see how um, realistic those boobies can get. That's what he wants. <laughs> we we talked we talked about the specs of Watch Dogs uh, last week. Is it possible that um, a quad core PC will be able to run this game? You guys think? Yeah, I think yeah. so. I, I think it is. Like quad core should run it. Also, it depends on your graphics card because the graphics card is what's really going to push this right now. So quad core will run it, but like, what graphics card are you talking about? You know? I think you're going to need a monster to get what you saw out of that trailer. Yeah, well, they, said at least, they said at least a GTX 780. Yeah, that's a brand new. Have 780? That's what they said to, to for what they got in the trailer. Well, it's, what are you guys picking a, uh, this game up for? Which console are you guys getting it for PC? I'm getting yeah. it for a PC. PS4. Yeah. PS4. Yeah, I want to get it for the PS4 just to see, like, um, graphically how good it is. See if it's, like, as good as Infamous, if not, not better. Well, the reason the reason I'm getting it for the PS4 is because I can't trust my PC, even though it's a pretty decent PC. I I don't know. I'm I'm really new. I'm not too nerdy, guys. You know, so I I don't really I really don't know what to expect out of this PC. So I want a a really good version, something that I know is going to be comparable to a mid-range PC. And so I want to go ahead and go with the console version of the PS4. See, it seems like they're pulling a crisis here. They're they're setting the bar super high, which I'm excited about because that'll force people to upgrade, and then the next generation of games can be even higher, and that's exciting. See, I'm kind of... I don't know. I might get the PS4 version as well, but I mean, like, I already got the Watch Dogs $31 for for the PC, so that's why that's why I didn't hesitate to click on it when I saw the price, but mm-hmm. I mean, I might get it for... depends. If I have, like, extra game or you something... You have to get it for PS4 it. so I can come kick your ass online, bro. <laughs> dude, I know. Dude, how many people are going to spam me? Oh, my gosh, dude. That's, that's why, like, I love advertising my, you know, either my Steam account, my PSN account, because games like that where people could hop in, like, I was playing Dark Souls 2, like, streaming it, and people saw me play it, and they came online to, like, to totally, like... Just mess to mess with you. Yeah, so I thought, they're like, oh, you have to jump over to sex. So I jumped, and I died. Like, <laughs> they, they purposely were messing with me to kill me, and I, I think that's fun. I, I love stuff like that, so... I love streaming. I think that is, it is super fun. I was streaming some trials, and the chats were... It was pretty entertaining. Wow. Um, so what have you been playing on uh, Not Too Nerdy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I've been doing Warframe a lot. I had like, a group of people, like people subscribed to me and stuff that want to play Warframe, so I've been doing that. I decided to actually... Oh, so you're up- playing with subscribers? Yeah. That's fun. I was actually... Uh, they convinced me to go get another part, which is called a Rhino Prime. Mm-hmm. That Rhino Prime is not cheap, by the way. It costs like $70 for an upgrade, but... The whole thing, if you get that, you pretty much unlock a whole bunch of things, like a whole new armor. He looks completely different. You get, like, a whole bunch of different level-ups. Everything's pretty cool. Now, I'm so like, you had to pay $70 for the upgrade, the in-game upgrade? It's not yet. In- it, it does everything. Like, it literally upgrades weapons. You have, like, a whole new line. It's like a whole new game, pretty mm-hmm. much. Now you completely just switch it to different levels. You go with people that are leveled up as well, so you, you'll just be matched evenly and stuff like that. But it, it does add to experience. I'm not going to lie, because just seeing the other people, the weapons and stuff that they had, it really was pretty cool. So that's only for people, obviously, that are fans of it, that they know they're going to play for a while. Yeah. Otherwise, There's the a 70... lot to that game, though. I mean, it's yeah. a deep game. Yeah, and, like, there's so many worlds I didn't even visit yet, and that's the thing to it, that, like, it's meant for someone that's going to play a lot because then that $7 is justified because it's, like, another game that you just bought because they're going to be playing it for months on end. Like, I could be playing this till next year if the server's up because there's so much content I'll never get to. How is it How is it populated? Does it tell you kind of like the number of people that are online, or it, do you ever have trouble finding a match? I never have problems getting, like, four people. You never have that. And, like, it's it's so quick finding people because there's so many people playing. And there's always, like, different groups of people. It's not like I'm randomly with the same person over and over again. Like, I never see the same person unless they're in my party. Wow. So... It's a Maybe lot of we gotta do a Beastly Thoughts plays on this one. 
Get a bunch of us in there so you can show us the ropes. That'd be yeah, a fun. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know what? I'm, I'm, I've watched your uh, your uh, Warframe Wednesdays quite a few times. I have to honestly say I've never played the game, and I, I see that you stick with it. Is it a, a really fun experience? Is it something you think I'd like? I, first of all, I like third person shooters to begin with. So that that's one thing. I, I I prefer third person, first person shooters. I'm just so used to that, like so calm. Like I'm just that's my style, you know. And same thing, with Uncharted. Once a new Uncharted. Like comes in like I can't wait for the, the multiplayer for that, but uh, that's what it's like. It's like that, but on top of it, they have melee attacks. We go in and he has weapons. Like you know, I have like the the ethers, which is dual swords. You know, I paid for that with uh, credit that I earn in the game, but like I got dual ether like swords and stuff like that. So it's a different thing. And just think of it as a ninja in space. That's all it is. Yeah. So okay, so. The- the cool so thing. We're, we're, we're definitely going to get together as a team, and you can show us the ropes. Right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's four player. Yeah, and I, I mean, once I get that Rhino Prime, then like I could pretty much show you the ropes and not worry about losing either, because there's no way you <laughs> like, just walking through watching. Yeah. <laughs> the suit, the armor is sick, man. Like it's literally huge armor. It looks like a rhino, so I thought it's pretty cool. But uh, besides that, I did the infamous paper trails. You know, I sat down this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, like after work, I just sat down and just did uh, part three, part four, and part five. So the hardest part of the Infinite Paper Trails is going back to the website because you have to sit down and figure out the clues. And there's so many different things to do, but once you get used to what they're looking for, it's you start to find things a lot quicker. But there are things that are so complicated because it takes you a while to sit there and figure it out. So, But, I mean, it's only meant for people if you like that mystery stuff because it has nothing to do with the game itself in reality you actually become like investigator you have to investigate different clues and stuff like that so I think that's awesome I think that the fact that they've got like kind of this uh, you know after the story there's still more to do in that game yeah. I really appreciate that kind of stuff I'm not I'm not playing the paper trail stuff I haven't even fin- finished the single player campaign in that game but I, you know I just like when gamer when game companies just kind of add content at like a regular basis, just to give you something, you know, else to do with your sixty dollar purchase. Well, the way that they said six weeks that it was gonna last, to me that sort of says that after the six weeks they're gonna have a DLC for the store. Like mm-hmm. there's, well, that's why well, they're stretching it out. It seems like. That's now, cool. I, I haven't tried the paper trails either, but one thing I gotta say that I do like about it is that it's free. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's free uh, engaging content that's added to the game. And so after the six weeks, they're probably going to have DLC that we all pay for. But the fact that they're giving us something for free when the, the whole sea of video game developers very seldom do that is, is much appreciated. But I, I think that's why they're stretching it out for six weeks. That's usually the time it takes to, to touch up and fix like DLC and stuff like that. So they want people to hold on to it because we know that it's a single-player game, like you said, that most people get rid of it. I'm done with it. I, I platinum it. I could get rid of it. But by doing something like this, you'll have like a good portion of them holding on to the game so that when the DLC comes out, then you could also get people to purchase that. Because I'm almost positive that's why they did exactly six weeks. So it gives them like a month and a half until the, the DLC comes out. So I've been uh, playing three brand new games this week. Uh, the first one being Trials Fusion. You guys checked out Trials Fusion yet? Yeah, I saw you play it. That was hilarious, man. <laughs> that game gets pretty hard pretty quick. <laughs> I love Trials, dude. Like, you convinced me. You're the one who convinced me to buy it just by watching it. I'm like, all right, I'm going to buy it now. That looks like a lot of fun. It is. You know, it, it does a good job. It eases you into the action. If you're not familiar with Trials, you know, it's a 2D dirt bike racing game, right? Uh, the only controls you have are gas, brake, and the lean on your, on your bike. So you can lean forward and lean back to control, you know, uh, your weight distribution on the bike, and that it's helps you climb bike. hills. Yeah, it's a lot like Excite Bike. And this version, this is the third Trials game, and they actually added a trick system, which is actually pretty fun. Um, and I gotta say, if you're a fan of Trials, this is definitely a this is a really good version of Trials. Um, the graphics are unbelievable on the PlayStation 4. That's the console I'm playing it on. Uh, it does a better job, I think, than past Trials, where in the in the past games, you get through the easy and the medium levels like really fast, and then you're just stuck on the hard levels, and it doesn't do a good job of kind of teaching you the skills that you need to get through those hard levels. This one does a better job, I think, of kind of easing you through those teaching you the skills you need slower so that you kind of get a better grasp on them so that once you get to those hard levels, you actually have the skills that you need to get through them. They're still a pain in the ass to get through, 
But the brilliance of the, all the Trials games is the quick reload feature. You hit the B button and instantly are taken back to a checkpoint. You don't have to wait for a loading screen. You're just instantly there. So trying the same jump over and over and over again, you might try it 30 times, but it only takes you a minute to do it 30 times. So even though you just keep trying, it can be a little frustrating, but at least you're not waiting for a loading screen over and over again. I love that game. I think it's really, really fun. Have you guys checked it out? I didn't even get an answer. Not too nerdy. Not yet. Like, I used to do like like trials, regular trials. Yeah. And uh, I trials HD. Yeah, trials one. HD. Like I, I love that. So like I wasn't sure I was gonna get it, but then like I saw your video, I'm like, oh yeah, it's definitely. You can tell it looks better than yeah. the other one. Yeah. And it, so like that's what it's all about. I mean, I, I love creating levels on that. So that's what I'm mostly probably be spending time on creating different levels and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to that too. I haven't had a chance to play it. I haven't seen your video either, so I want to check that out and see if it's something that I'd enjoy. I do love those type of uh, racing games. I'm not into things like NASCAR, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know, if it's like Excite, but I've never played a Trials game, so I, I can't judge it. But I want to check out your video and see if I like it, and if it's uh, worth it, I might give it a shot. They're fun. It's a twenty dollar game. They also are charging uh, twenty dollars for a season pass. I guess they're going to have some DLC coming out, but uh, for twenty dollars, I think it's worth it. I definitely got twenty dollars worth of entertainment out of it. I've also been checking out Trials Frontier, which is the uh, iPhone version of Trials, and uh, that game sucks, man. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> just bad. Wow. No, it's terrible. You know, I've played a couple of like Trials ripoffs on the iPhone before, like Bike Baron and stuff like that. Because I like that system, and it actually works really well with kind of like a mobile type game, you know, because you can just you can play in really small chunks while you're waiting for something to happen. But this game is a free-to-play game, uh, to, and there's three things that you have to earn by playing. You have to earn gas, you have to earn gems to upgrade your bike, and you have to earn money uh, to buy new stuff. And the gas, you get to race about three or four races per day and then have to wait for your gas tank to fill back up for 24 hours before yeah. you can play again. Great. It is what? unbelievable. Yeah. And wow. the game doesn't really play that well. And you're constantly talking to people. Like, I don't know where they got this, like, little story mode idea from, but it's, it's boring. And you're just constantly clicking people's faces, like, shut up, let me play the motorcycle game. So, you know, it was surprising to me because, like, other games like Bike Baron were not quite as good as Trials on the console, but this game is not nearly as good as Bike Baron. So if you're looking for something like this on iOS, I'd go with one of the rip-off games as opposed to Trials Frontier. I think this game is Is it compatible with controllers? Like, What's that? For example, is it compatible with controllers? I don't know. Uh, the controls work pretty well on the iPhone, though, because you really only have four buttons, so you basically just you kind of lean your thumb one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And that seems to work well, uh, but it's not... The bike doesn't respond as quickly as it does on the console versions because I think it's designed to be a lot easier than the console version. Because I know, like, some games, like, it has a certain control when it, you're just using a phone. Mm -hmm. But if it sees that you have a device or controller, it switches back to, like, a normal control settings. So, yeah. like, you can control it, like, normally. So... That's why I was wondering, because like sometimes they set up for MOGA or so, something else. So. Yeah, there's like three of those I think are available for the iPhone right now. I haven't used any of them because I heard they're all pretty much junk. So yeah. I, I never bothered picking any of them up. But maybe it's worth checking a couple of them out just to see if any of them are worth having. I'm hoping that like a revision two of those is going to come out soon with see, better buttons, better connectivity and stuff I like that. I think they perfected it on Android, though. That's the thing. Like I, Apple, I heard, doesn't have that. But like Android has so many different... Like device, but Moga is like the best for Android. Like they have yeah. so many, they're just professional. Like it literally feels like a 360 controller and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I, I've just heard that they're all pretty much garbage for the iPhone. So yeah. I just haven't bothered checking one out. Also, I don't really, I'm not that interested in carrying one around. Mm. But I did yeah. play an awesome game on the on iOS, and that one is called Monument Valley. You guys heard about this? No, I haven't. No, that, I definitely never heard that. This game is unbelievable. Have you, you guys are familiar with MC Escher, the guy who draws those like kind of impossible uh, stairways and stuff? Mm. Yeah, you guys yeah. know this guy? You guys yeah. ever heard of Echo Chrome? Um, game came yes, out yes, three yes. Three or four yes. years ago. The stick figure game, yeah. Yeah, so this game is a lot like Echo Chrome. It has a story. It's very beautiful. Let me see. I'll, I'll boot it up so you guys can just see what it looks like here. Uh, but this game 
it's uh, four dollars on I- iOS, and it is unbelievably fun. It's a puzzle game where you have to manipulate the world around you to make puzzles out of these M.C. Escher like uh, structures. Like, uh, and it's really fun. It's it's really good looking. The puzzles are just challenging enough that you got to think about them, but never frustrating, which is kind of a fine line. I have heard one complaint about this, and that is that there's only ten levels, and you basically play through the whole game in about two hours, but it's only four dollars. So called, it's not like they're charging forty dollars for a two-hour game. It's yeah. called Mon- Monument Valley. Monument Valley, yeah. This sucks. On Android, they got two games called Monument Valley, and and one of them's one of them's an angry, I mean, a Flappy Birds knockoff, and the other one just pictures of valleys. Wrong. Yeah. So- it's very nice, you know, when you manipulate the world, the kind of guitar plays, so you're making sounds with your finger, and uh, there's a really nice story. It's kind of a very relaxing game to play. You get through the whole thing in about two hours, but it's it's one of my favorite games of the year so far. Oh, I've seen this. Yeah, I know what you're talking about now. That's cool. It's really cool. Yeah, it's really, it's a great game. It's hard to explain with words. You kind of got to see it. <laughs> so it's just a, it's a puzzle. It's game. a puzzle game, yeah, where you kind of, you touch places for your character to walk to. Bugged my my mind now. <laughs> I'm not, like I've never got into mobile gaming too much. Like the only time I mobile game is like when I'm on the the toilet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's, and that's for like ten minutes. So. Do you sanitize your phone? <laughs> <laughs> That'd probably be a good idea. Yo, Kabe, can I borrow your phone? <laughs> you smell something funky, man. It's not my fault you asked for it. <laughs> So uh, I went on and got these, uh, Brian Rabbit, and, and these are the low end, the uh, Turtle Beach P P P four C. That us for the PS four. Oh, okay. I haven't and, checked uh, that out. Is that you like them? It's yeah, a lot yeah. of, is that stereo or is that one year? That's not one year one. one. It's one year. It's like the thirty forty dollar Turtle Beach headset. Yeah, but I got it for two. I got it for two bucks. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Brand brand new. Um. Well, I, I accrued some... Uh, Did you get it from that guy with the coat? No, I got it from eBay Bucks. When you make oh. purchases on eBay, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you accrue eBay Bucks. And so when I, I saw the price, I wanted to see how many bucks I had. Now, I paid two bucks. You know, what the hell? Go ahead and grab them. I also uh, bit the bull and did something crazy, guys. I bought myself a green screen. You did? See? Yes. And what are you going to use uh, that for? Sex scenes. Nice. I like it. You know, more... Have you ever had sex on Mars? Too many want... DC gamer. I want more chroma keying in my porn. That's really something I've been looking for. It was something, on that Mars? I... It's something that I really wanted to try and learn about, and uh, Sony Vegas allows you to... Uh, Wait, to are we talking utilize... about porn or the green screen? Yeah, no, that's something <laughs> This is getting good. Whichever one sounds oh, best to you. You know, uh, I, I, I wanted to give it a shot and, and see it and become more creative and, and do something special on my channel. Uh, the green screen wasn't very expensive. It was $70. It's 10 by 6, mm-hmm. so it'll take up a good portion of my uh, living room. And, uh, you know, try something out. So it should be here probably Monday or Tuesday, and uh, we'll see what happens, guys. It's just something I wanted to give a shot. So. Can you make your own green screen, like uh, just like a green sheet or some shit? You, you can. I saw some guy on YouTube. Uh, he, he did it. Using some uh, green poster boards. Never trust anything you see on YouTube. You actually, with see, I'm getting green screen too. But like, like you said, um, you could actually do it with anything. If yeah. it's a flat color with uh, yeah. Sony Vegas Sony lets Vegas, you promo yeah. anything. So you could actually just select the color and do it. But it looks the best with either green screen or blue screen. The green screen is the best. Like indoors, blue screen is the best if it's bright. If it's an outdoor, it's brighter. The brighter it is, then it's better for with blue screen. Otherwise, green screen is the best indoor. So, oh, okay. yeah, that's why. Like, I, I got the green screen. The reason why I got it, like coming is because my friend. Like, I used to do like CGI and stuff like that. So he wanted me to help him with special effects for his film and stuff like that. So I figured like I might as well use his channel to do some practice a little bit. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what I'm gonna use it for, but more, more than likely, if I do like a video game review or something. Like I wish I had it for Infamous, cause I would have shown like Neon Powers or something. Like <laughs> that's what I want to use it for. But I mean, we'll see what else I'll do in the future. But yeah, man, you, you'll have fun with that. If you need help with anything, let me know. Like I love. Oh, love I that definitely stuff. will, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. About that. Are you guys good with uh, like graphic design? What was that? 
Are, are any of you guys good with any like graphic design? That's what my wife went to college for. Because I fucking suck at making banners for my channel. <laughs> I swear. Like, I don't know what it is. I can't do it. Get a hold of GetPunk99. I've been, oh, I've been trying to talk to him. Awesome. He never replies to me. So. I don't know. Hey, 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 Con, have you seen my banner? I made mine. Um, the one that says BC Gamer, it has, like, Mario and oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. and That's pretty slick. It took me about half an hour to put that together. But Jeez, you spent a half an hour on that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, what's his face? Um, Get Punk made me one. Yeah. And it was it was real similar to yours, Briar, and I was like, nah, I don't want to bite Briar Rabbit style. They might say, Beastly, get out of Briar Rabbit's nutsack. So I, I decided to go ahead and. You're uh, welcome to my nutsack anytime, yeah. Beastly. <laughs> oh, thanks a lot, buddy. Uh, and so I tried to make my own. It really isn't that complicated if you got pretty decent software. I used um, I used Sony Vegas to make mine. So. Do you guys have Photoshop at all, Conway? I was using GIMP. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. That's what I use. Photoshop, not Vegas. Photoshop. Yeah. Okay, if you have Photoshop, I could just send you a template. So then the template will just be there. And you could well, I had a template want. for uh, GIMP, and yeah, I was working with it that way. And then I went to go save it, and then I went to go upload it to my YouTube channel, and it was just all pixelated and stuff. Well, and that's the thing. Like, like, there's a new template because it has the new template has three different dimensions because there's one for mobile, one for tablet. Yeah. And, uh, yeah no, this one, one had it too. One from the yeah. computer screen. This yeah. one had all the dimensions. Yeah. So you have to make sure it's the right PPI and all the other stuff. So when it enlarges, it won't look pixelated. So uh, it, for for those who don't know what PPI is, not to know, you tell them. It is pixel Pixels per inch. Per inch. There you go. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not good at this shit. I don't know. <laughs> Which uh, that's what here we, here goes Briar Rabbit, but that's what Apple loves to brag about. We have. PPI. It's called what? What? What did Apple call it for their uh, Retina display? Retina. They made <laughs> up a word for it. Everyone uses that. Oh, Retina. I'm like, you realize Retina never existed. The Apple just said, what do we call this? <laughs> retina display. <laughs> You're just an Apple hater. Hey, you guys want to talk about the NPD numbers? Because I thought these were pretty interesting. Yeah. Let's yeah. That was, I All was right. Talk so about that next. we've been talking a lot about whether Titanfall or Infamous would be the best-selling game of March, and the uh, numbers are in. Titanfall. Uh, Titanfall, it right. seems like, just barely beat out Infamous. Infamous did come out, I think, a little bit later. Is that right? Or did uh, it come out the same week? The, it came uh, out on the 22nd. Titanfall. Yeah, but you also got to think, like, Titanfall came out for the, the Xbox 13. One PC and the Xbox 360, so but they're the, on the, more the, consoles. 360 the, version didn't come out till April, though. The, the, uh, oh, so they, don't the have, uh, they don't have any uh, counts for the Xbox no, 360. The, that's not in there. The NPD numbers oh. are counting the PC and the Xbox One version, um, and Titanfall went out in March. But um, yeah. Infamous came out over a week later. Titanfall came out on the 13th, and I think Infamous came out on the 21st. I or, think no, what's, no, the what's concerning, though, for Xbox fans is that even though Titanfall was the biggest selling game of the month, the sales of the Xbox One actually went down in March. <laughs> yeah, which I think is really concerning because oh, wow. they had the top selling game, uh, but the console sales went down. That might have been just because a lot of people in preparation for Titanfall had already bought a console, uh, but still, I mean, it's concerning, well, the, I bet. The, this is the third month in a row that the PS4 had uh, outsold the Xbox One, and uh, the NPD numbers came out as of April 6th. The PS4 sold 7 million units, 7 yeah. million worldwide, and the Xbox One had only shipped 5 uh, million units, so if we're going to be generous... The Xbox One may have sold 4.5 million if you're generous because Microsoft came out on the record and said, we have shipped 5 million. And you know if you go to a store now, you can find Xbox Ones pretty much anywhere. The and, PlayStation uh, so, uh, you can find too. But that, the fact that the PlayStation number was sold through and the Xbox One number was shipped, shipped. was big, yeah. You want to hear something crazy with those numbers? Yeah, always. So in the U.S., PS4 obviously outsold Xbox One in the U.S., but you want to hear something in Japan, what happened? The PS Vita outsold the PS4. PS Vita outsold the PS4. That's crazy. PS4 was in third place. PS the Vita was number one. Okay, everyone in Japan is buying the Vitas right now because What's there's the game? no games. There's no games for PS4 for them. There's only one game, and they're you know, and the other one's a port over from PS3 game. So it's amazing how times have changed. They can't play our games or something. The ones we get. 
What was that? They can't play uh, Ghost or Battlefield or Infamous. Or yeah, they're, they're, not not into, they're not into a Western type of games. If you put uh, Monster Hunter on the PS4, it'll sell millions. Oh, our games aren't Monster. good enough for them. I see how it is. No, well, it's, it's, I mean, a, it's a different culture. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and over in Japan, they see Western civilization as kind of an imperialistic type of uh, mentality. And so they shun what we like Jeez, over here. Where could they have gotten that idea? <laughs> America, America, American exceptionalism. Isn't that what Obama said? So it, it's like that over there. I mean, th they have a lot of games like Japanese RPGs, stuff like that. As you see, there, that's missing from this next gen right now. There, there mm -hmm. is no Japanese RPG. As soon as stuff like that comes on board, if you get like a Persona game on a PS4, like that's instantly going to sell so many copies in Japan. Like, they're waiting for games like that to sell them. Otherwise, what's the point of them going over? Because don't forget, they also have... The reason why the Vita sales went up, because they have the Vita TV as well. So they have other things that we don't even have here that they could get. And I didn't think that. I thought they were going to be selling more, because they only sold, I think, 500,000 or 600,000 total in Japan. That's it, for v PS4s. They'd even reach a million, and it's been a month now. They also have an aging population over there. They're They're, like, the average age of the Japanese... Uh, citizen is very old. I don't know the exact number, but it's really old. So it's really, just, I, I never yeah. knew that. Yeah. Well, so it's I just know that they, 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 they all not. look. They, they they start to look a lot older this? at thirty. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the, uh, let's look. get back to the FPD numbers. I'm telling the truth. <laughs> I, I got you, I got a tattoo of you, Tata Hikaru, on my arm. Mm -hmm. And when she turns 30 in real life, this tattoo is going to turn into a monk. <laughs> Hair falls out, yeah. So South Park Stick of Truth sold. It was the third best-selling game, but I was surprised that Call of Duty Ghosts is the fourth best-selling game in March. Uh, what is that, four months after release, the thing is still selling like crazy. It's because they lowered the price down on it, too. Did they? What did they lower it to? Uh, it's, it was 30, wrote, yeah, 30 bucks. $30. 30 bucks brand new? Yep. Yeah. Wow. That's, That's huge. Battle Souls doing. 2 was They're the fifth best-selling game. Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes was the sixth best-selling game. That's Minecraft crazy. was number 10 for the Microsoft Xbox 360. Like, I don't... I don't know if people have, like, their genre of gaming, but I can't see playing Minecraft, a pixelated game like that. I I've tried, never played it once. Can't do it. I tried it, and I was like, God, this game is so boring. It, like, it literally gave me a headache because everything looks exactly the same. Just a bunch of fucking boxes all over the place. Did you guys see how many like copies Minecraft sold total? Like they re they recently announced it a couple weeks ago. No. It's it's like 25 million with all consoles with everything. 25 wow. million different versions of it. So obviously people are definitely played it, which is just insane. Like yeah. and you see like uh, the Android version and like the versions when they go to a different console. Like how are people still buying the newer version? I'm just like, wow, I'm just amazed, man. The PC version, you know, the PC version is so upgradable. Like you can mod it in so many different ways. So just because somebody's playing Minecraft, you don't actually know what they're playing. They can be playing a Call of Duty clone inside of my Minecraft. They can play playing the Hunger Games. They can be playing a parkour game. They could just be mining, like playing like regular survival, like that you would play in the original game. On the Microsoft console, though, or in the Pocket Edition, it's really just the standard survival game of Minecraft. So it's surprising to me that people are still playing that because to me, the real appeal of Minecraft is all the stuff you can do with it in the community. Because, you know, my kids play a ton of Minecraft. They play on uh, the computer, they get online, and they play with their friends, and you never know what they're going to be up to because it's a different game every time, every server they log into. And hey, I think hey, that's Brian, really cool. I, I got a question. You said a Call of Duty clone on, on, on uh, Minecraft? Yeah, yeah, they, they, they clone all kinds of stuff in that game. Yeah, yeah they were playing first, first person three maps with snowballs. First you, person you, shooter? Yeah, you th yeah, you're throwing snowballs instead of shooting a gun, but all the Modern Warfare three maps were completely done in Minecraft. There's blocks. no way. Yeah, they had um, I think like a year or two ago they had the Black Ops two transit zombie mode. Oh really? Yeah. I went on the Modern Warfare 3. I saw them playing that. I was like, hey, that looks like... Oh, no way! So I went on there. I started beasting on kids. Dude, <laughs> <laughs> they had the, the Titanfall version. 
they have, they have a Titanfall, Titanfall one? Titanfall mod. You got to look at a video of this on YouTube, man. Like The Titanfall mod, like, you see, the like, they even have a Titan that you jump into and you shoot from the Titan, too. No. Like, it's pretty <laughs> sick, man. And someone did that. That is. That's amazing. And so, I think... to discount Minecraft, I think, right off the bat, that probably means that you haven't seen all this extra stuff that's there. Because there's, yeah. the graphics, yes, they look like you know, blocky graphics, but there's a lot to that game once you get into that modding Well, scene. that's what I'm saying. Like, if the graphics could be improved, I could definitely get into it. All the mods and stuff you do, like, if they could put graphics at least kind of like to, like, a Call of Duty extent, you know, graphics kind of like that, I'd be really into it. But that game gives me a freaking headache. But, yeah, <laughs> I'm really intrigued with, like, all the stuff you could do, all the mods, you know, how much time people take to make, all these separate things in this game. Just like, mm-hmm. you know, Woody's server. You know, that's a big server, and he's only got, like, 20 people working on it, and he does pretty well, you know. Uh, but for me, it would have to be graphically enhanced for me to ever get into it. Well, yeah, and all of the uh, painkiller already hoopla that happened this week. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, heard some numbers dropped like wings. making $100,000 on um, a month on that thing. Yeah, that that's why he doesn't really do um, YouTube anymore. The only thing he does on YouTube is the P- uh, PKA. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Conman, like, what do you you said if it had better graphics like Call of Duty? What if it was like a Lego game, like the way the the Lego games are, like the, for example, Lego Hobbit and stuff yeah, like that? Yeah, I actually, yeah, I would probably play like if it was like the you know just how it is right now. Like, I just can't get into it. I, I don't know. I'm just not intrigued by how the graphics are. It's just too blocky. Yeah. I think that style would work for it. It was more like the new Lego games, like the way it's so detailed, but yet it still has that blocky look to make it look like a Lego. For them, mm-hmm. like it'll look something like that. It'll actually work. But I think, like I know what you mean that if you want it more, you know, graphically intense and stuff like that. But or, some of the mods even, my kids have make that game look a lot better too. They yeah, add they add better serious. textures, much higher res. Yeah, and it looks now, good. There's a game that came out for PS3 and I think 360. Well, it might just be PS3 called 3D Heroes. An RPG that came out uh, yeah. I think in 2011. That game looks better than Minecraft, but it's it's in a similar vein. When I see Minecraft, it, it just the aesthetic alone pisses me off. I'm like, I can't do it. I can't. Do I, it. I, I, it doesn't bother me. I think it's kind of cool. I think it was a novel idea. Um, I was surprised that it caught on as big as it did. But it was once I figured out what my kids were up to in that game, it makes sense to me. I mean, the game is. It's more than one game. It's so many games, and it's got this whole social culture inside of it that it's really exciting. You know, I, I don't even know what the game is about. I have no idea. Yeah. it's about all kinds of different stuff. I mean, yeah. what's the what's the actual story of the game about? What there is doing? no story. There's a survival mode in like basic Minecraft where you get in and you just try and survive. You is know? it it's kind of a, cre- a creeper or something that falls yeah, there's, around? There's monsters that'll try and kill you, especially at night, and you got to build the house to protect yourself. I think the way it started off with was kind of like Sims. That's how I see it, because you could build stuff, you could destroy stuff, you know, you harvest stuff, and then it started getting really popular, and then that's when people started making mods and different games within the game, Yeah. and that's how it became so popular. And it's huge on YouTube. I mean, people go on YouTube, and there's so many people making videos of, you know, people playing together. Yeah, I think there's... When they can't play video games, they sit there and watch YouTube about Minecraft. Yeah, I think the the Minecraft community is actually getting bigger than the Call of Duty community. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Man, speaking of that, I, segue, I'm I'm really excited about H1Z1, guys. Oh, yeah, oh, that man. game looks badass, doesn't it? I'm so excited about this. <laughs> Free to play. You like 1,000 people in one server at a time? Yeah. That's I think, I think it's more than that. I think it's more than that. Um, I'm trying to remember. I, I think I'm pretty sure they said more than 1,000. I'm pretty but, sure they're um, going to have issues with that when it comes out. Well, it's the same server, and it's the same engine as Planetside, and Planetside already has 2,000 people playing at the same time. So that's why they probably won't have issues, because they already built for that. That's what yeah. it's built for. Planetside already was their test. So I think that's why like they're excited about it. I feel like it's a... We all know it's a DayZ clone, but I feel it's a DayZ that works. Yeah, yeah. it looks Daisy. like a good DayZ, like a finished, <laughs> a finished DayZ, and I think everybody's excited about that. Like, the gunplay looks like it's actually going to work. You know, it's not going to be like, shoot, and then watch a guy die ten seconds later. Yeah. You know, like, it looks like it's going to actually be an operating survival game, which is really exciting. That comes out on pl- PC first, then PlayStation 4? Yeah, they're going to yeah. port it down. Did I'm you really see- 
free to, it's free to play, and I'm sure there'll be tons of microtransactions, but or you know, in-game currency that can accrue with you know achieve achievements and things like that. Yeah. I'm just I'm very happy to see the MMO genre coming over to consoles. It took a very long time for this to happen. I just can't believe how big this game is, and it's going to be free to play. Well, by, uh, what, by what I was hearing, it's basically an open world game. It's like like DC, DC Universe it. Online, right? It's, just, it's uh, something similar to that, and that's very popular on the PS4 as well. And well, I'm just saying for it to be open world and have so many people online at once, and yeah. it's becoming a free game, yeah. I, I think that's awesome. You know, and they got cheap Wranglers, which is awesome. <laughs> do you guys <laughs> see? Was it me or do you see the zombies? Didn't they look like they're fast moving zombies? That they're yeah. moving really quickly. Yeah, that's no, something no. that Daisy does not. Daisy zombies are like walking slower and they they get a little bit faster, but they're not like that. I saw some of them sprinting in the trailers, where I'm like, that's insane. Dawn of the Dead, yeah, like Dawn of the Dead. <laughs> And the gunplay looks like it's like almost like Call of Duty quick, you know, like yeah. it'll actually feel good and be usable as opposed to DayZ or some of those other games. So I think that's cool. I mean, and the crafting, yeah. they still have crafting too, which is good, so. Yeah, you can build bases and all sorts of stuff. You can drive vehicles. Do we know a uh, release date for that yet? No, they still have a release date for it, yep. Man, I'm, ex- I'm excited for it. They keep saying just like the the next update uh, for the places for it. Just everything is coming soon. That's what they're basically saying for everything. I want to say probably uh, first quarter 2015. I mean, because it's an MMO, it's going to take some time. I don't. Uh, think so it's already been completely developed. It's just they're just waiting to release it. Really? Yeah, it's it's a done deal. They've been working on it for a really long time. Well, shit. Yeah, I mean, like. Uh, 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 I don't know if you guys see my video, but there was talk about that Daisy actually stole yeah, the, the idea, idea from H1. them. Yeah. yeah, and they came out with their version, which was shitty, and H1Z1 finally finished their product, and they want to release it to the world. Now, they said they've been working on this for how many years, Kyle? Was it four years or five? I think it was longer than that. Yeah, they've been working like, on this uh, for a very long time. Six or seven time. years. Wow, that's like raising a kid. Damn. I think that's why... <laughs> They said that the Planet Side 2, because Planet, Planet Side 2 is, has the same server and same engine, so I think that was their test to see how much they could push on the, on the engine and on the, the server at the same time. So like, Planet Side 2 does some decent stuff, too. They got, like, yeah. spaceships flying around and, like, big they stuff happens. A lot. And if you see the people playing Planet Side 2, it's ridiculous. It's literally all 2,000 people you got playing at the same time. So, like... You got a lot of things going on in that that world. It's crazy, man. Now, now yeah. that I haven't played Planet Side, but isn't that the one where what you do in space actually affects the what's going on on the planet? I, or am I think it's something else. Yeah, I think you're thinking of Eve Valkyrie. Eve, yeah, that's yeah, right. that's that's one you're thinking of. But this one is like it's it's a it's a shooter game as well, and it, it reminds me sort of like movement like Halo because you are floating a little bit because you're in space, but like it's still fast paced and there's a lot of people, a lot of people playing and, and like you go to like different, they might do different games, capture flag, capture different points, you might have different missions to do and everyone works together or people work against each other. What I want to see for H1 is uh, I want to see, are people going to build their own society and then gang up on other people because like that's what oh, that's gonna be crazy. Crazy. Yeah, I see that happening. We should like you know we should do that like have a yeah, just have our, like section yeah. and like we all go out and just and start beasting on everyone. <laughs> you know, kid, I like kid it. People and, I kid think I'm gonna have a lot of feed them or, old oranges and shit. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I mean, the looks amazing. It's free. I think it's gonna be a really fun game to play, especially with friends. Conme, now you your trolling video will work, bro. You could go up to some like and like completely troll them and then just get them. <laughs> do whatever you want to do on that. That would be awesome, dude. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey, listen, guys. I'm looking at this right now, and I think I need to say this right now for everybody who's watching the show. Hopefully this gets out to as many people as possible. This sale is over tomorrow. It's on PlayStation Network for PS for PlayStation games, okay? Now, this is the Flash sale they got going on right now, and these games are normally priced $20 and below. Each game is on sale right now for $0.99. Cents. I'm going to go through the list. This, this sale is over tomorrow at 7 a.m. Hold on. Let me log in so I can order. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Back to the Future, the full game is normally $20. It's on sale right now for $0.99. Cents. Blast Factor, $0.99. Cents. Braid, $0.99. Cents. Crash Bandicoot, $0.99. Cents. Crash 2, Crash 3, Crash Commando, $0.99. Cents. Crash Team Racing, $0.99. Cents. Echo Chrome, the game that Briar was just talking about. Echo Chrome 2, 99 cents. 
Everyday Shooter, 99 cents uh, for PS3 and PSP. Gex, Enter the Gecko, 99 cents. Gotham City Imposters, the full game, normally 15, 99 cents. Jurassic Park, the full season, 99 cents. Plants vs. Zombies, 99 cents. Red Faction 2, 99 cents. Red Faction 1. Uh, Red Faction Battlegrounds, 99 cents. Retro City Rampage uh, for Vita and the PS3, 99 cents. Retro Great, 99 cents. Salmon Max, the Devil's Play Playhouse, 99 cents. Spyro 2, Ripto's Rage, 99 cents. Spyro 1, 99 cents. Spyro Year of the Dragon, Stuntman Ignition for PS2, 99 cents. Super Stardust HD, 99 cents. Tales of Monkey Island, Tokyo Jungle, <laughs> Urban Trial Freestyle urban tr uh, for Vita and PS3. When Vikings Attack for Vita and PS3 and World Gone Sour, 99 cents. Till tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Beasley, so Beasley, yes. I was reading the comments. Can you do that list again for me? No! <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. I was starting to trip out with all that 99 cents. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn it, Beasley. I'm on $7 so far. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, these deals. There's definitely about three of these. I don't three, three or four of these that I want that I have to get today. So I think it's it's a great deal. Uh, Gotham City Imposters. If you guys haven't played that, it's a pretty interesting shooter, and uh, it's an online shooter. And it's a yeah, that was a fun game. Yeah, you can't beat that for a dollar, man. So you guys check out the PlayStation Network right now. More amazing savings coming from PlayStation. Do a lot of them are cross buy too, which is pretty cool. Yeah. When did that come out? That came back out during Modern Warfare Three, right? So that's yeah. got to be. I want to say 2012. Two yeah, that game was fun, though. It really was, yeah. I, I don't know. Is there an online community? Maybe if enough people buy it for 99 cents, it'll kind of reinvigorate There are going to be a the... ton of people buying it for 99 yeah. cents. And if you guys like Telltale's The Walking Dead uh, game, the Back to the Future game is 99 cents, and the Jurassic Park game is made by them. They're not, they didn't do nearly as well, but it's still made by the yeah. same company. The so Back to the Future game I played, that's really good. The yeah. Jurassic yeah. Park one I heard wasn't too great, but the Back to the Future I can vouch for. That's pretty. That's really good. That's where it started. And then, like, The Walking Dead really changed it all, but it started with the Back to the Future. So. Okay. Yeah, man. I'm that sounds like a great Plants deal. I'll be on that. I'll be on that. Plants vs. Zombies 2, man, and Red Faction for PS2, please. It's mine. I got 20 bucks to blow. Money yeah, Sony is just banging it out of the park with all this stuff. You know, when you buy, bring home a PlayStation or a Vita and you just log into that PlayStation Network store, it's, like, unbelievable all the deals in there. Not You get, like, pretty significant amount of, like, big-budget games for free almost every month. Then they always are running some kind of sale or another. That you can get a pretty discount, a nice discount on like other games. Like as soon as you bring home one of these consoles, you probably have three or four games that you can download and start playing right away for next to nothing. You know it's crazy. I have the last time I looked at my PS3, I have 12 gigabytes left of free space. Even maybe a little bit less than that. Out of I had a whole terabyte in there. Oh my Shit. god. That's how many games I downloaded. I literally am almost out. I could not believe it when I saw that. I am almost officially out of space. <laughs> so, you, you must have put that terabyte in. They never offered one of those retail. Uh, right? Yeah, I put it in. Yeah, can you go replace it? The, the PS3, yeah, yeah. PS4, you can always replace That's the one thing I always love. You can always replace it. That's a, the thing I did the first day. It came. I just popped it out and put a new one in. How I've been you strongly considering putting an uh, SS. I'm sorry. Go ahead, cut me. I was I'm just amazed that you can go through that much memory on a PS3. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I got it's I got free. five gigs left, but I only got a I got a, a two fifty gig in there. I got five gigs left. I always had to delete save data just to install new stuff for the PSN. Can Remember how you had to spend seven hundred dollars to get a sixty gig PlayStation three? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, but like if they say free, I download. Save I do too. <laughs> I can't stop I myself. Care. <laughs> One day I'll get to that. For I got so many games I've never played. I know you'll have to save it on the hard drive, but like some of the stuff, like I'm like, ah, it's there already. I, I might as well. I might do that erase it so I can fit other things in it. Once you download it, then you can erase it, and like you can always get it back. But yeah. just in case, I want to keep some of the ones that I really like in there in case the server goes down or whatever, and I can still have the game. I want to oh. add a uh, SSD to my PlayStation Four. I've been I I've gotten sick of load times, and I think that a SSD add an SSD to a PlayStation Four is going to make one mean gaming machine. No, have you have you verified that? I mean, I I haven't looked for, it, but have you seen any like videos? Yeah, yeah, you can do it. Absolutely. 
Uh, and already, it actually shortens the, the load time? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I did Skype calls to help people do that already. It's it's not that bad. It depends what SSD you do, first of all. You need mm -hmm. a good speed. And uh, the ones that are killing it right now, the, the Intel and the Kingston are the two SSDs that are the fastest ones right now. The brand new Intel, I think, is uh, it's 700. It's going to be pretty expensive, but it's 720 megabits per second. Oh, I thought you wanted to dollars. So, no. Well, wait till the money part. Uh, yeah. That's good too. <laughs> yeah, this thing's very far. Like, if you get like a 500 gigabyte one, for example, that thing's gonna cost you like a good. It's gonna cost a lot, man. It's gonna cost like 500 dollars, like 400 dollars. Yeah, I think you're you're doing good if you can get around 80 to 90 cents per gigabyte. Yeah. So if you get 500, you're you can expect to pay about 400 for that drive, but. Jeez. You know, it'll last you the life of the system. Those things don't die like uh, spinning discs do. And, you know, if you do decide to take it out of that, you can put it in a computer. And, I mean, they make a computer boot in three seconds, you know. It's unbelievable the difference they make. So I, I really want to put one in my PlayStation 4. I, I really kind of want to put one in my Xbox, too, but it's a little more it's a little more of an operation to get it inside your Xbox One. Yeah, yeah. And, and putting that in your Xbox One voids the warranty, yep. correct? Yeah. Yes, that that voids the warranty completely. So that's why it's like it's really not that well. And like Microsoft doesn't support give you the extra file to read the operating system because you need a multi operating system. So to put that in there, Microsoft doesn't give you support at all. So if anything happens where they they remove it, they're just like, well, we told you that it's not supposed to be in there. So yeah. they can do whatever they want. Like at least Sony has it right on their website. They even have a step by step guide. They show you the picture, how to take off the cover. They show you everything, how to do it, and they also show you how to download it, everything, the file that you need. So it's very, it's very simple to do. Like it's power, like, power to the people. Yeah, power it takes like people. 15 minutes tops to do that. So yeah. Wow. And it's better off doing it now before you load up that hard drive. It's just going to take longer to download all that stuff again. Well, if you uh, end up getting that SS, SSD, let us know, bro. I want to see how that works. Yeah. Yeah. See, I've been thinking about doing that for the PC, though. Like, I want to get... I have two SSDs, like the one for operating system. I have another one, and I have like a main four gigabyte or four terabyte for uh, my saves. That's just regular hard drive. Yeah. But uh, I want to do like a whole bunch. I'm thinking about four, like a raid three. I want to do raid zero for like oh. for SSDs. <laughs> so, Scary raid with SSDs. Yeah, I mean, like you have a, a higher percent failure rate. <laughs> it keeps doing that, but the speed of it, you can maximize it to like a gigabyte per second. Like so, that means like like insane amount of time, like for it to like just register everything. So the only catch is that if one fails, then you have a chance of losing memory for all. Yeah. So imagine video editing out of that though. That'd be oh my god. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. And like my gameplay, like I don't keep my gameplay. I make a video, then I delete the gameplay. So it's like yeah. that losing that data doesn't really scare me too much. You know, uh, was something. There's a game I wanted to ask you guys about. Oh, the, a game that I have not bought. I only remember the last time I bought a baseball game. But I'm actually excited to get the new baseball game for the, the PS4. I got a chance to see it, like, and it's uh, with MLB The Show. Yeah. It, dude, it actually looks really good. It really looks like a good baseball game, and. I don't know. I'm kind of excited about a baseball game, which... That's is always been a good baseball game. I saw that, too, man. It looks really awesome. It looks like yeah. photo, almost photorealistic. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Like for the And it's a big leap from the PS3 to the PS4 version. Like You actually see the difference of like the characters, and not just the characters. The people in the stands look yeah. really good. The stadiums look good. So I'm, I'm actually excited to get that game. That's definitely a game I'm getting day one, and we'll see what it looks like, but... Their their baseball games have always been real good, and they support crossplay. So if you get the you get the console version and the Vita version, you can play on both and kind of continue your season on both. So you know it takes a long time to play 162 games to get through a season. So you know it's you, nice you to guys, have that option. You guys remember when uh, on Dreamcast NFL 2K came out? Yeah, yeah. Do you remember how everybody thought that looked like photorealism? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. I remember being in the mall and people were like out in the middle of the mall looking at the screens and they're like, "Is that a real football game?" And then when I'm you see it away. now, <laughs> when you see it now, you're like, "Get the hell out of here!" <laughs> it's funny how our perception changes, right? Because yeah. now it really is approaching that. But every now and then I'll take that game and I'll throw it into the, into my Dreamcast and look at it. And it looks so blocky to me. It's like Minecraft almost compared to how the games look now. 
I remember being I blown away TV. by by the original Halo on the Xbox. Yeah, I, was, I was stunned by how good that game looked. That was uh, the system seller that turned the tide for me because uh, PS2 was my life at the time. And then when that game came out, I was like, there's nothing like this anywhere else. i got to buy this this Xbox. And that Speaking was of Halo, forgetting. Martin O'Donnell got fired from Bungie. You guys hear about that? No. He's the uh, composer that's composed all the music for the Halo games and has been working with, uh, what's his name, on the uh, on Destiny, and he even did the Flintstones kids commercials. Oh, hmm. uh, did he get fired because he wanted to uh, input Seinfeld soundtracks for the next next Halo game? They're not saying why he got fired. Uh, he's, he's clearly pissed about it, though, and, uh, you know, it's surprising because to me... The the soundtrack, like the score of the Halo games, was part of that dramatic feel. Like I, rem- I'll never forget the first time I played Halo and in that opening level, like first time you land on the Halo, and like the score is dramatic, and like you see all the scenery for the first time, and it almost feels like a like an open world, like in the Xbox the original days. Like that was an impressive feat. And the score for me, I, I bought the score on iTunes from the original Halo games. I was really surprised. He, to me, Martin O'Donnell was one of the like core components of Bungie. It was surprising to me to see him go. And the, the worst part is they're using his music still. Oh, yeah, I'm sure they, they own said, everything. They, said that, they yeah. said that they're going to, either way, all this stuff's going to be in there. So like, it, they, they made sure to say that afterwards that it's not going to delay the game at all. Like All his stuff will be in the game anyway. Yeah. So that's kind of... I'm sure there'll be lawsuits happening later to try to Paul fight. Paul McCartney. Him. He was working with Paul McCartney on the on the soundtrack for Destiny. What? What? Yeah. McCartney? Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh, I was I surprised, got, too. Got the Beatles in the house, damn it. <laughs> they were wow. all out for Destiny, damn. <laughs> yeah, they're, I think they might be banking uh, on this game a little bit. Well, I think it'll probably be, if not the number one selling uh, first-person shooter of the year, it might be. It may be the best-selling game of the year, it might, because it's it's cross-platform, man. I mean, think about all the people buying Titanfall, all the people buying Infamous, all the people who want these games. Destiny's going to be a no-brainer for Xbox One users and PS4 users. It's coming to the uh, last-gen consoles too, right? That's correct. That game is going to sell ridiculous amounts. Is it it's coming to the PC as well? I think it might be. I'm sure it is. Yeah. I I think that's just amazing. Yeah, I like games like that. It's like it reminds me sort of like Borderlands, but it just the style of it just seems really cool to, catch, to get loot and to, to level up your weapons and talk to your friends and do, like, raids and stuff together. Like, to me, that's, like, fun. Like, that's awesome, you know? Yeah, it does. It looks like a ton of fun. And the, the story looks interesting, too. They, they've released only little bits of it, but it looks it looks like it could be... Like, you uncover it as you play the game, and uh, that could be fun. Hey, I want to I want to take a quick second to say I want to thank all you guys, even the, the members who aren't here... This is a, an amazing part of my life, and I just want to thank all you guys for being here and letting me experience this. This is amazing. I really love the Beastly Thought Show. More power to the people. You're welcome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, no, I like it too, man. I, I love this. Show, man. I, this is one of my favorite things to do all week. Me and my uh, fiance had a conversation last night. We went out for her birthday, and uh, I started talking like I'm looking forward to uh, Beastly Thoughts tomorrow night. And she's like, well, just get done before... We have to watch our HBO show. Oh, <laughs> no sympathy. No sympathy from her. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, and uh, on your wedding day, uh, the Godzilla movie comes out. You guys can go see that. <laughs> <laughs> we might skip it. We might skip it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, feel you. I can just see you. This is some honeymoon. We're going to yeah. head down to Arizona for our honeymoon. Awesome, really man. Have a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Have a had- great time. I had something I was gonna ask you guys. Um, I watched something on Gamespot, right? They had a a little video. This is called "Watch Dogs and Misleading Game Trailers," and the uh-huh. whole segment was talking about how <laughs> not just Watch Dogs, but how people, especially in the past, would would hype up the way a game looks. And uh, when you they do a little uh, switcheroo, they call it, that they they show you something that at the last second they they do bait and switch and they switch the game and now you have the real gameplay as opposed to a high end PC or CGI or something like that and they pretty much explained the process that that it's harder to take bits and pieces of 
an actual game where you're doing a trailer as opposed to when you're doing a movie trailer or something. Movie trailer, you can take bits and pieces out of the movie, and it's different because you can always, it's the same way, the same setup that you always enhance the sound, you always enhance the colors. But in the game, like, you can't do that. So that's why they usually portray it as uh, what they're aiming for more than what it is right now. So mm -hmm. I just curious, what do you guys feel about that? Do you think that that's something that they're probably going to have to switch from now on because obviously it's going to be harder and harder for them to hide that because the way Twitter is and people taking screenshots, stuff like that. Like, what do you guys feel about the whole thing? Well, I, the way I see it, it, it can be uh, misconstrued as false advertising for the consumer, but I do understand uh, what the developers have to go through. It's like Aliens Colonial Marines. When that game uh, released its initial trailer, none of that footage was actually in the game. And the way they explained it away was that they took those few seconds to make that trailer, they took souped up, ramped up versions of their engine. They they, they took all their uh, their tech and put it into that little short period of time and made this this trailer that looked better, had enemies that weren't in the actual game, and it was just an amazing looking piece of work, but it had nothing to do with the actual real game. And so everybody was pissed off because you got the real game, it had nothing to do with what you saw in the trailer. So it, it can be false advertising, I think if they're going to do something like this, they need to at least have something similar to what you see in the trailer in the real game and not two completely conflicting ideas and worlds. But yeah, for a consumer, you see something in a trailer that sells you on a product, then you buy the game, and that part of the game is not even not even in the game, it can be false advertising. So yeah, it's a, it's a fine line. You got, Did someone get killed? Uh, <laughs> it's a fine line you've got to walk uh, when you're creating trailers. That's what I think. What do you guys think? They do that in movies a lot. They'll take a part of the movie that's not, or a, a part of the movie that was cut out of the movie and put that in the trailer. Uh, they do that especially so they don't have to show spoilers for the, for the movie. But, you know, they are showing something that isn't finished yet. You know, those trailers, I believe, are made well before the game is finished. So it's got to be hard to... Six months to a year before six well six months to like eight months is when trailers usually get ready. So yeah, like, so you got an idea of what's yeah. going to happen in your head, and that may or may not actually happen. <laughs> and you're you're developing the game on a PC and a development kit, which I think I've heard the development kits actually have like more memory than the actual consoles do. So I don't know. Like, like this generation, they're very similar. Like for PlayStation Four dev kit and Xbox One dev kit, are very similar to like what it what it actually is, it still has more memory though. It has more cash drop too. So like every the low time that you're talking about will probably be quicker on the dev kit then. But I mean what's the last time you got a whopper that looked like it did in the picture? You yeah. Know? Like, <laughs> and, and, and all this stuff is baloney, you know? <laughs> That was a great analogy there, Bernard. Damn you, Burger King. I just have a question for you guys. It's like kinda off the subject, but I know I talk about it a lot, but GTA five, um, even if it's not coming to the next gen what do you guys think about the retailers that are taking uh, pre-orders for it, seeing that Rockstar hasn't released any information, no one's releasing any information, but these people, I don't know if it's a scam or if they don't, something that we don't, but I don't think it should be allowed, you know. Isn't that like a le legal who's, issue? Uh, who's taking pre-orders for it? Um, I forgot. It was a Portugal retailer. That's the thing. Uh, it, was, it was confirmed by Eurogamer, too. If it's a they, legit place... Then that's yeah. different because like their policies on their policies are different. So you might have nothing to worry about. If the game doesn't come out, they won't charge you. Something like that. Like, but if it's like a, like say if it's like a Walmart or something like that, yeah. if you took pre order there and you don't get the item, they don't charge you anyway. So yeah, it depends you on can who just it get is. Your pre order money. Back. Yeah. Yeah. Some people do it just because they're hoping it's gonna be there. Some people might have an inside scoop somewhere, but. Yeah. I the mean, retailers, they what they do is they the reason they charge that five dollar pre order is for one is that gives them like some kind of inkling of how much how many of these things they should order, and they're putting that money in the bank and getting interest on it for the entire time that you have given them that five dollars. So if they get you know twenty thousand people giving them five thousand dollars, it's a lot of money, and it's just sitting in their bank account earning interest. Well. Uh Cod made what I want to say to you. Um, Grand Theft Auto V was the, the biggest selling game of 2013. It sold well beyond anything that was released. They've already made definitive editions of other games, and, and uh, yeah. 
resolution to up to other games like Call of Duty, Battlefield. This game is more than likely going to be re-released on the Xbox One, PS4, and PC. It's a cash cow. And, and like you, there's many people out there like you own the PS3 and the PS4 who would go out and pay again just to have that experience again on a, on a much more powerful piece of hardware. So I wouldn't stress too much over it. It seems like it's a no-brainer that Rockstar would re-release this game. It was the number one selling game of last year. And I, don't know, I heard it kind of flops. I haven't seen any videos or anything on YouTube, so... Not once. <laughs> <laughs> if if you uh, look at some of these places, too, that, that do that, some of them are taking guesses, and, like, it's it pays off sometimes to take a guess like that because what happens is all these people are going to start pre-ordering there, so if that does come out, they say the official date, next thing you know, all those people just bought it from your place because you're the one that posted it first. So yeah. Like, some well, I think it's funny, that. too. It's like people like over there that are doing the pre-orders. There's no one in the U.S. You know, that's taking pre-orders for it. So I, I don't know if it was like a scam. Like Briar Rabbit said, you know, they could be holding all that money and build an interest on it and basically just got a shitload of money for nothing. Yeah, it's free just money. Just telling people a lie to get their hopes up. Well, so. you take a risk anytime you do pre-orders or anything. I, I, hope, I don't know if people know that. There's a lot of policies. If you read the policies, you take risk with pre-orders. Like... Unless it's a full game pre-order and you don't get the game. If you don't fully pay off the game, if a company went bankrupt, you don't get that money back. I don't know if people know this and they didn't look it up. Like, this is stuff that already happened. When Blockbuster, like, people paid all this money to pre-order the next-gen consoles at Blockbuster. Blockbuster went out of business. They went bankrupt. All those pre-orders were lost. What? They didn't, and people were sitting there fighting for, fighting for, fighting for. And finally, this one guy got his money back after fighting corporate, but... He didn't realize by him putting an order on it, and once a company goes bankrupt, it actually says that. That's one of the things, that they don't have to pay you back on that because that's the normal store policy. So you're always taking a risk when you pre-order something. That's why usually, if you can, pre-order the day before or something like that or a couple of weeks because a lot of these games, you're going to have so many copies anyway. If you do a couple days before and you know that game's coming out for sure, you're good. There's no need to pre-order months and months in advance because... GameStop takes pre-orders till the day before usually, yeah. so like there's no need to do that anymore. Yeah. You know, that's just the way it is because you never know. Last minute, usually if a game's canceled, they tell you the latest is like a week before. I mean, look at Titanfall. They they said it for the 360s. They said it was delayed a, a week before it was coming out. So that's usually the latest you'll ever see that. So. Uh, Briar Rabbit. Now you said you were playing three new games last well this last week. Mm -hmm. uh, have you been enjoying Titanfall? Uh, yeah, I'm still really enjoying Titanfall. That game has got legs for me. I, I think I'm fairly safe saying that at this point. I don't know if it'll last till Titanfall 2 comes out, but I, I'm just having a blast with that game. It's just the parkour aspects are so much fun. Running around in the Titans, the different weapons they have for the Titans. I'm having a ball with that game. What I'm really hoping is that they're going to introduce uh, new modes of play, uh, new maps I know are coming, uh, they've already said they're going to start introducing like nose art for the Titans, which I think is really cool. So you'll be able to tell like you know one Titan from another. I I'm having a blast with that game. I got a question for you guys, and this is more sales stuff. Do you guys use Origin at all? No, I try not to. I hate Origin, but I I'm forced to at times. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, this is like, this is another sale that's going on. Uh, this sale ends on the twenty. Let me see, twenty second, I believe. This is a sale for Origin, and it, it, it's ending this weekend, I believe. Uh, and uh, Battlefield 3 is $10. It's normally $20. Premium is $15. Um, premium Edition is $20. Battlefield 4 is $25. Premium is $73. They got Crisis for $10. Dead Space 3 for $10. Dragon Age Origin for 5 bucks. Dragon Age 2 for $10. FIFA 14 for $20. Origin That's was the first one, right? Dragon Age uh, Origin? That was the yeah. good one, right? Yeah, Dragon, Dragon Age 3 Dragon is Age. coming out this year, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, I, I don't I don't know how excited I am about it graphically. I, I would have thought that, but then again, I saw early renditions of the game, so it might look a lot different now. Mass Effect 3 is 10. The trilogy for Mass Effect is 20 bucks. Need for Speed Rival is 25. They got SimCity for 15. They got four SimCities for 10 and 20 bucks. The Secret World for 15. The Sims 3 for 10. That's a lot of games. You got some highlights, maybe. Type. <laughs> Titanfall, Titanfall Origin is forty-eight bucks. Yeah, who would want to do that though? Uh, the, the, the deluxe edition is sixty-eight bucks, and then they got Tomb Raider for ten. 
They have a deluxe, deluxe digital version of Titanfall. Yes, sir. What's that got? It doesn't say. It doesn't specify here, sir. It but brings it, HD into the game. <laughs> you get HD. 1080p, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I've I've never used Origin. Uh, there, it's like a their Origin own is version a bag of, of Steam. Hurt. Isn't it like Steam kind of? It's kind of like Steam, but it's crappier. It, it's all right. I'll put. I'll rank them right now. It goes. All right. Uh, it goes Steam first. You play. Second, you know, you play sucks, and then Origin is below that. Origin is the worst out of the three, and like, and, and then yeah. and you have Microsoft. Yeah. Well, Microsoft is Microsoft. I mean, like, <laughs> well, you that, can't even say it with a straight face. Say it again. Like, <laughs> it just drives you play is all right. It's better than Origin, but Origin just drives me crazy, man. Origin is just. What, is it hard to make purchases or something? It, it's just sometimes their servers drop. Sometimes, like, that's the, that was the part, remember, where this whole uh, SimCity and all that stuff? Like, when some, the servers go down in Origin, you can't log in. You can't register. You can't do anything. And, like, they usually have problems, and they do a lot of maintenance for Origin. Origin also screws up sometimes where, like, the advantage of PC, which is coming to PS4 soon, by the way, the advantage of PC is that you could pre-download your game before it's released. So then, yeah. as soon as it hits 12.01, you could play that day. Yeah. Or with, uh, with update 1.70 for PS4. Yeah. The PS4 is going to have that, but what happens sometimes at Origin, it, it freezes or screws up, and there's an error code, and you can't do that. And then all of a sudden, everyone tries to download it the day it comes out, and it, it crashes, and it's just a mess. It, it's a mess. I mean, they got better now. I think they got a little bit better with. Uh, when Titanfall came out, but the thing with Titanfall, Titanfall runs on the the cloud for Microsoft, so that has nothing to do with them. You still need an Origin account, but like it still runs on the cloud. So I think that's the only reason why they didn't crash. Otherwise, they probably would have the servers would have crashed. <laughs> to be honest with you, I heard uh, actually tomorrow night or tomorrow during the day the PlayStation Network's going down for maintenance. Really? Yeah, that's good. Because that means that 1.7 is coming. Yeah, hopefully. For, uh, between 9.50 a.m. to 3.50 Pacific or 12.50 p.m. to 6.50 p.m. Eastern Time. Good. Okay, I figured this would be this week. So I figured it was a Monday or Tuesday. So that shows that it's going to be there, which is good. We can get rid of these splitters on our uh, HDMI cables. I'm keeping mine because I know they're going to restrict something with it. But <laughs> <laughs> Share Factory, is that going to be part of this update or is that going to be part of the next yeah, one? It's going to be this part update. of this one. It's this one. I got a. That should be interesting to check out. I got a new uh, weekly show coming out. It's called the the weekly check in, and uh, it it airs tomorrow. It's already uploaded, and basically what this will do is it'll it'll explain what games are coming out that week as well as any updates and patches for all consoles. And uh, I cover the 1.7 patch and Xbox uh, update as well. So yeah, it'll definitely be uh, part of this patch. I'm looking forward to checking out that share factor. I think that could be pretty useful for a lot of people. I like the the one thing the one feature I like about Share Factory is that um, that each game developer for each studio is gonna put in their own transitions, and that's the thing. That's why if you saw the preview, oh really? So that the infamous transition for the neon power, you uh-huh. saw a transition where it goes side to side with his neon power. That's the actual transition you could put into the game. So I'm sure it's only gonna be Sony developers, but they they might request or ask other people to do that for their games too if they put it on PlayStation 4. But they'll give you like a, a little transition that it's related to the game that you're you know that you're playing. That's awesome. I didn't realize that. That's that's a pretty cool feature. And they also have the feature with the music. I, I saw the Kame do this. So the feature of the music when he's talk about that, you could put in full length music in there. Which is like an instant YouTube flag. So go ahead, you can do that if you want. But, <laughs> yeah, but you can download music from YouTube and use that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's cool feature. I mean, the the best thing is you still can't upload directly to YouTube supposedly, but there's ways around that. Yeah, they weren't bringing the YouTube app like they were supposed yeah. to. It, there's ways around that. A like <clears throat> if you go right now, you can upload to YouTube anyway because you get it from Facebook. Facebook lets you download it, and you could just move. Or from you can Facebook. just do the external. Uh, Flash drive. Yeah, you can use uh, the USB drive with the Share Factory. Yeah, yeah, so that's the thing that it's going to help people anyway. But if you don't have a USB, you can still go just share it to Facebook and from Facebook send it to YouTube. Like it, 
It's an extra step. You don't have a USB to kill yourself. I'm saying. You know what? what are you using? Serial transfers? You got like a parallel cord? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, come on now. Who, who the fuck doesn't have a thumb drive? <laughs> yeah. Some people don't. So if they're going to say, oh, that's, a, that's extra step. Well, like, it's really not that big of a deal. Then you can also record away from it because the HTCP is removed too. So you could do your own editing anyway. So. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it'll change things much for uh, guys who are already set up to do this stuff. But I think you'll see a lot of people using it for I just think getting started. A lot you know, more people showing up in the YouTube community when yeah. that comes out, which is awesome. I I want to. I'm definitely gonna take some of those transitions though. I will steal some of those transitions. They have it for some <laughs> games. So I, I wish I had it for the infamous like transition. Just put a transition between my film. Like I would have did that. Yeah, that's cool. Right, so, I like that a lot. You guys want to do some uh, feedback? Got some questions. <laughs> From uh, subscribers? Who's got a baby? Oh, I have. Hold on one second. Someone's not happy. Yes, her mom left her. Uh, <laughs> oh, crap. What's the matter, Nazi Nerdy? The question I was going to ask you guys before that I was saving, now I can't find a person's name. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you remember your name. I apologize. I completely let's, did not write the first let's, name. Let's now. just call the subscriber Blazing Peanuts. This awesome, <laughs> awesome person. This person is definitely will never be nerdy at all. It's cool. That person um, asked me about the Maze of Spider-Man 2 and why it's not going to be on Xbox One. Like, what what do we yeah. think is the reason why it's not going to be on Xbox One? So Because Sony owns it. You think so? <laughs> Codmate is gone. Go ahead and go to sleep, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I see him, he looks more asleep. <laughs> That seems to be a uh, uh, a popular thing. Not too nerdy. You talked about this a little bit before we got going, and that that was your impression too. Was that hey, Sony owns this? Well, I owns wouldn't Spider Man. I wouldn't doubt if it was them because they own the Amazing Spider Man for the movie. So I wouldn't doubt it was them. But like, I think it's more that they were having problems with the ES RAM because you got to keep in mind a couple things that the ES RAM takes a while to, to develop for. And with these movie times, you have deadlines and you have to get them in. You don't have that much time to work in the, with movie like movie times for games. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it wasn't working too well. There might have been errors and stuff like that in the game. And but I also think that maybe part of it was like ah, instead of wasted time, like Sony's like, well, just don't let's make it delay or something. <laughs> but, <laughs> I, I don't well, know. I, I also think that it might also be that they had to rush to make the game. So. Yeah, they and it's a multi-platform game, right? Xbox yeah. 360, PS3, everything. Even uh, doesn't the DS have it, the 3DS have it too? Like that's the I thing. I would be surprised. These two things usually are like a shotgun when they come out. Yeah, but these like, movie tying games. Everything has it, and the 3DS except for the has Xbox it one. except for Xbox One, which is kind of <laughs> kind of funny actually. <laughs> is the Xbox One like the PS3 version of this, or is? Is it the PS3 of this con console generation? Is it just that much harder to develop for? It's, they, they have swap places, it seems. Yeah, it's that chip. It's the ES RAM. No one knows how to do it yet. That's why people are waiting for a DirectX 12 to unlock the power of it. But, like, it's still not going to do much. It's not going to do too much more. You know, like, and I feel like you'll still see more 1080p games with that. But it's going to be games that took years to make are going to be the ones that are going to be able to push that 1080p. If it's games that, like, are made every year or every two years, like maybe, like, a Call of Duty, even though they're, they're like, spacing those out more, games like that I think is going to be harder to push 1080p and stuff like that. So, I don't know. You know, Xbox One's got an uphill climb, I think, this generation. Yeah. I, I got to say, though, that uh, Xbox One is doing really well, all, all things considered. They are. You know, they, they came out with a huge deficit. They had a lot of going against them. And the fact that, you know, six months after release, they're sitting at almost 5 billion consoles sold, it does speak a lot about the console, the company, and its fans. Both consoles are selling better than the 360 and the PS3 did in the yeah. same amount of time. Uh, it's, it's just going up against a behemoth right now, and, and the PS4 is knocking them out the park, like Briar Rabbit says. Every chance they get, there it's a home run, and yeah. so it's it's so hard to compete against that when you get a console that's cheaper. And see now that they've got to at E3 announce this four hundred dollar uh, console, they got to. I mean, what can they do at this point where there are millions behind the PS4, and you know it's about you know profit, it's about moving units. They got a five hundred dollar unit. 
everybody's going to pick the PS4 every chance they get. Well, did you guys hear about the, they're supposedly, they're coming out with a cheaper version of the Xbox One, but supposedly it won't have a disk drive, it'll be an all yeah. digital That's That's console. the one, yeah, that's the one, the, the white console. Yeah. I don't see that happening, I think that's just, that's a made up rumor. They're going to go right back to that, people well, being upset with the DRM thing if they do that. Well, yeah. well Major, Major Nelson said um, a few months ago that they were actually trying to get away with that. Uh, with the initial, uh, you know, idea of the Xbox One was a discless console. That's something that they thought of first, but they knew that the the, the consumer wasn't going to go with it. And yeah. that was that was heavily rumored about three months ago that they were going to come out at the end of the year with a, a discless version, keeping the Connect. See, it's not just about the consumer not buying it; it's about Walmart not carrying it. Oh yeah. So you, why would Walmart why would carry this it? thing? Yeah. Why yeah. would Walmart carry this yeah. thing that they make no money on if they're not going to sell the games too? And Let's also, like they also, um, the whole discless thing is it just wouldn't it wouldn't work though because you gotta yeah. keep the reason why they're doing it. People won't be dumb about it. they're doing it because they wouldn't have to pay royalties for, to Sony for every console that's sold. That's another thing people forget. They have to pay royalties for the Blu-ray, and that's yeah, another thing that they, they did not want that Blu-ray in their con- in their console to begin with, but they had to put the Blu-ray there, and now they want to get rid of it, but they realize they can't because that whole DRM thing. If they do that, they'll fail, and that's why I think with the what's his name, Phil Spencer, right? Phil Spencer, or, yeah. yeah. Now that he's there, there's no way he'll let that. I don't think he'll let that happen. Not everybody's living it up with FiOS in New Jersey, like uh, not too nerdy over there either. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a lot of people who don't have fast internet or have huge or have really small caps on the amount of internet they can use per month, and uh, you know, the Xbox Dead Rising. Just downloaded like a 12 gigabyte patch. Huh? I mean, that yeah. is like a huge amount of data. Like I don't know how what? they can get away with that. Well, see the thing is, man, and I think about this a lot. Uh, in order for them to, re- to release a $400 unit, they gotta take something off, and it has to either be the disk drive or the Connect. And see the thing is, the Xbox One is built around the Connect, so unless they completely restructure the UI, you know, have both of the, the CPUs inside focused on the console itself, and you know, instead of one for the uh, user interface and one for the actual the gameplay, uh, then they, they really can't release a $400 unit. I mean, how could they do that? The only way they can do it is take a loss on the unit and hope to make it up in software sales. Not just that. How would they do it, though? Because what you're saying right there, they did this uh, thing. Like, we were just talking about how you can't replace the hard drive in the Xbox One. So now you're not only that you're going to be forced to download everything, and now you're stuck with the hard drive that they came with. So they that's the problem. They're There's a the really USB port on small. it. They could, they could uh, do external hard drives. You, you can't do external because even with the 3.0 speed that they have, it's still slow, and it, it will, it won't work. Like if you use a portable drive to read anything off it, you won't be able to do that. Like you're talking about, first of all, it's going to overheat <laughs> the portable hard drive. Have you ever? Touch a portable hard drive when it's loading a lot of memory, it gets hot. So imagine trying to read off a full game off that. There's, it wouldn't happen. Hmm. My my question is, what can they do then? Because it's almost like checkmate. If they can't, I mean, unless they just sell it as it is for four hundred bucks, they don't have any killer IPs coming right now that anybody's really thinking about in the wind. How can they make it up for, in software sales? It seems like it's checkmate right now. They can't release, I mean, release a distance version because nobody would carry it. They can't remove the Connect because the whole console is centered around the Connect. They could remove the Connect. Yeah, I mean, if they would put the voice recognition through like the headset or something, they, the Connect's really unnecessary. They just did that so they could make more money. If you actually think about it, oh, we're gonna give you this, which uh, if you buy the Connect by itself, it's not that expensive. It's not an extra hundred dollars. They'd, so they'd, they'd be pro if they did it, but I I think they could do it. I not just that like. When you when you try to do stuff like that for have like developers and people develop for something, you need a certain percentage of the amount of users that own it. They have a lot of people that own it now that are forced to own it. So like now they can afford to get newer people on there that don't want it. You know what I mean? So like you get new people that if you do the ratio, maybe forty percent of the new people that you get will still buy it. So you're at a good ratio for it to have developers still develop for it to connect. So like you're already set up for that. So that's why I think that it's this you know this Christmas will be the perfect opportunity for them to remove the Connect because they have enough people now that have that own the Connect and that that was a problem with the original Connect that there weren't enough people that owned it for Let's them. Let's not to forget do. they are selling these things. You know a lot of people are buying these things and they are happy with them. Yeah. Five million 
uh, shipped. You know, I don't know what the sold through number is, but five million shipped is a huge number, and that's a lot higher than the Xbox 360 at that time. And the Xbox 360 went on to sell, you know, tens of millions of consoles. So I, I don't know that it's time to panic for Microsoft, really. You know, yeah, it looks like they're going to get beat overall by the PlayStation 4. Yeah, I think they're just mad that they're they losing. Made a lot of money for Sony last generation, and they got whipped by the Xbox 360. So. You know, panicking. I don't know if it's time to panic for them. Well, by yeah. the end, of, by the end of the uh, seventh generation, the PS3 and the Xbox One were pretty much neck and neck in sales. The Xbox One started off, and they skyrocketed out the door, leaving mm-hmm. the PS PS3 behind. But by the end, they were both. I think it was eighty million. Mm-hmm. And that was what million. four generations of co- or four revisions of that console for PlayStation Three. Xbox One will go through the same thing. They'll have different revisions of the Xbox One, and at each one of those can be a price drop. Xbox 360 had how many revisions? They had. Oh, yeah, they had like two in like the first two years. <laughs> like, here's here's the thing though. Like, um, something else people aren't even talk about is this is how well the PlayStation 4 is doing. That's scary. It's they're beating out the Wii sales. Like, that's insane. The time frame they're beating out the Wii sales by a lot. That that's the thing that's the crazy part. It's not just they're being out the old PS3 or the 360 number. They're being out the Wii sale numbers. That Wii was going crazy. There's people lining up everywhere for it. That just shows how well they're selling. You couldn't get a hold of a Wii for like six to eight months after that thing released. So like the fact that they're being out the Wii sales is that's shocking to me. So and that the is. Wii pretty much sold the most hardware. And it's I'm sold. hearing I'm hearing that they're still constrained as far as numbers go too. It's they can't keep up with consumer mm-hmm. demand. Is that true? I, I'm yeah, starting to see they, them on shelves at this point. They said that they're, they still cannot meet consumer demand, even after 7 million units. I don't know if I buy it, because I see them on store shelves. It's hard, man. Not in, not in New Jersey. I don't, I don't, I don't see them at you. all, Brian. <laughs> I'm telling you now, look. I, I live Maybe I want to buy a couple and put them on the eBay. <laughs> right. I, I haven't seen any. Honestly, Brian Rabbit, I swear, I haven't seen any in GameStops. And I go in GameStop just right on a regular basis. I have go to three different Walmarts. I haven't seen any. And I don't care if I'm going into to Walmart to get a bag of almonds. I always go through electronics to see what's going on. And I haven't seen a, I've seen a PS4 once in a Walmart. And that, I'm talking about in months here in Atlanta. So, I mean, and, and they just came out after this uh, announcement of 7 million units that they cannot keep up with consumer demand of this, of this system. That's a good problem to have. I haven't seen any in New Jersey. I haven't <laughs> seen any in New York where I work. Well, except, like, there's some people trying to sell it, like, on the side of, like, the game store, which is pretty funny, but... Like, <laughs> they, got, like, they got a real big coat, don't they? Yeah. They're like, you looking for a PS4? I'm like, no. I'm like, why? <laughs> <laughs> why? I got it for the low. Yo, but, yeah, man. That, that's the one thing that, to me, it's kind of it's kind of weird. The, the sales numbers is shocking. But what do you guys think it's going to... Do you think Sony is going to do like a huge announcement at E3 that might just hit Xbox One juggler type thing. Like, they're going to go for the kill. Like, do you think they'll do that, or they're just going to ride the wave and just do what they're doing and not try to go above and beyond? Because... Well, I, I mean, judging by what's been going on right now, Sony's been making all the right moves. I mean, they really have. Yeah. They show, like, they, they probably won't show any footage of, uh, like, the Uncharted game, but, like, if they show an in-game rendition of what the world might look like, or if they show potentially what the next God of War might look like, it's a wrap. You know, it's a done deal. I mean, because honestly, be what are we looking? What that are people looking either. forward to? On the, yeah, I mean, if they show like the next Halo, the next Gears game on uh, you know the Xbox One, that'll get the consumer really excited and pumped. Uh, it could, it they really better show it. off the next Halo and the best Gears of War. They better have something about well, both of those. Well, the Gears of War, they're only going to show a title screen. They can't show anything on that. They just got the, the brand new developers for that. But they will. They will oh, show that title right. screen. <laughs> well, that's like a release for at least two years. So that's going to yeah. be like a, a 2016, like with DirectX 12. I guarantee you that's going to be – I'm thinking that's going to be the first game for them that's going to hit – that's going to be with DirectX 12. Is there a Gears That game? makes sense. That makes that, sense. To me, that's going to be, and they're not releasing Direct Dice 12 to 2016. So I'm pretty sure that's going to be the game that they're going to try to push to to unlock all, all the power of the console. So. so so, not too nerdy, what are you thinking that Microsoft can show at E3 that will get the blood rushing of the consumer? I mean, all they're left with is Halo. Like, if they can't show Gears, they're going to have to show Halo. Halo, they showed a CGI picture of... Oh, that was uh, good on you. That yeah, was Mass like, Effect... People, 
Is oh, that going to be like, multi-platform oh, this time around? Oh, definitely multi-plat. They, yeah. they can't. EA already is feeling the pressure of not having time fall yeah. on the PlayStation 4. There's no way EA will make that mistake again. They already, they, they just can't. EA will not, they'll, they'll just lose so much money doing that. Microsoft let go all of their in-house developers. I think they're really f- feeling the uh, pinch from that right now. What is that Project Something game? That Project they Spark. Yeah, that game looks interesting. Yeah. That I mean, that's one of those games that reminds me of Little Minecraft. Bit. Not the way that it is Minecraft is the fact that they let people create their own things, and like yeah. a lot of those games seem more successful when you let the the users create their own worlds, and then people get to, a chance to play their game or get to see it. Yeah, really flexible too. You can create anything from like a first person shooter to like a real time strategy game with that. I heard it's compatible. They have the app for. I believe, for Windows 8 and also uh, for tablets so that you can actually do a touch screen on it to do different things with it to create the world. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with it. But what what are the other games from Xbox One that they have? They have... um, I'm trying to think. It's like... Everything I'm looking forward to from both consoles is uh, multi-platform for the rest of the year. Sony's got some... You know, I'm kind of sick of God of War, but I am excited for... Uncharted. Uncharted, but other than that, I can't really think of anything from Sony. Well, they have Drive Club. They, they're trying yeah. to push out an Order eighteen six six or whatever. Or t- that, that game 86. looks interesting, but it's a single player game, so it'll last a month and then I'll move they on. They have a lot of indie games coming out. That's a indie games. Much it. They're killing it with indie. Yeah. Every month, so, I'm playing something on that console. And a lot of them are are going to be games that are coming out on PC, but PS4 first. So like that's another thing, the advantage that they have. But uh, they have, yeah, Sunset Overdrive is an Xbox One game that's coming out, and also Quantum Break. Are right, those are that two other ones? That looks good. Yeah, Quantum Break. I forgot I about that. I hope one. that's good. Yeah. The thing is, Quantum Break though, like I, I'm like holding out to say it looks good because I we still haven't seen gameplay yet. We only saw the the CGI trailers for it, so I'm like, I'm wondering. But the idea is pretty cool because they have a TV show that matches up with the game. I think that sounds awesome. I love stuff like that when they incorporate different things besides the game. But I don't know. Like, do you think it's gonna look really good, Beastly Gamer? Uh, I guess it all depends on the way they implement. I, I don't want Sewer Shark. I don't want a game that's you know full motion video with, you know, you make a decision here and there. I don't know how they're going to be able to implement. Uh, a, a video game world into a show and make it feel real. I mean, unless you go somewhere in the show that's in an alternate reality, and then this alternate reality is the game, and then you leave that game to go back to the show. I don't know how they're going to do it, but I like the idea. I like the dynamic, just like you. I don't know what to expect, but the fact that it's something so different out, outside of the box, that excites me. Yeah. I mean, the one thing I like, I used to like, the game wasn't that great at all. I mean, but it wasn't a bad MMO. It was like one of the first big MMOs for, like, uh, the consoles and PC, which is uh, Defiance. And uh, that season yeah. two is coming out. That the game was a lot of fun. It wasn't the best graphics because the consoles couldn't handle it because of MMO, but the game was fun. And, like, to me... And then you like, watch the TV show that happens in the same world, you know? Yeah, and then you cool. watch a TV show, and every single time that there's an episode, there's another mission that related to the TV show, and it led you into the TV show, and then once you're done, you got to do another part of it. So it, it was pretty cool that they tied it in. I think that was the first time I really saw them tie it into TV shows, so... Yeah, that's that That was a cool idea. Yeah, and that show's coming back. I actually like that show. Season 2 is coming. <laughs> So we got a few questions in the chat. I wanted to see if you guys wanted to answer them. Before you ask them, you haven't said this once during the show, and I just want to say it. Nintendo. Okay, go ahead, Brian Rabbit. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> We really did it. You're right. Nine to five. Nine to no, five gamers not here. That's the problem. I said we. I did say we. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't talking about us. I was talking about we. <laughs> like, wow, what a day when Nintendo doesn't get mentioned. Okay, right, go ahead. <laughs> Enrico Aramburo, I think I'm saying that name right. I apologize, apologize if I'm not. Are you going to talk about scuff controllers and are they worth the money? You guys have any experience with scuff controllers for first person shooters? I, I think scuff controllers is basically a cheat. I mean, in a way, they kind of enhance the game, but still, I think it's cheap. Why need? Why do you need a scuff controller when you, you already have a controller? I mean, why do you need because something Because they are awesome. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, if you're like a really hardcore, intense gamer for first-person shooters and you're, you know, die hard yep. and 
you just want to fuck everybody up, then yeah. I mean, go with a scuff controller. But if you're just an everyday basic gamer and you don't care about being on the top, then, you know, just regular controller, you know. Well, the big deal for me with scuff controllers are these paddles on the back. That is the number one feature. Uh, yeah. The Razer Anza for the Xbox 360 also had a similar setup. They definitely make you better at Call of Duty, and they definitely make you better at Titanfall. Titanfall, the, the difference is even more dramatic because jumping around and being able to aim at the same time is a definite competitive advantage. I have a question. Uh, Cod, Cod saying it's cheating. That it might be on the verge of cheating, but the professional Call of Duty players use them in competition. Yeah. So, you know. Uh, I have a question for the users out there, mostly me. What exactly is a scuff controller? <laughs> All right, so a scuff controller, what they do is they take standard PS3, Xbox 360, or Xbox One controllers, and they modify them. They add okay. buttons to the back that you can use with your middle fingers by squeezing them. And they map them to either be like jump or the knife button, right? So it's just a modded controller, and it's just a type of modded, a modded controller. controller. Also, okay. they they put trigger stops on the trigger, so that the range of motion is much shorter, so mm -hmm. you can rapid fire quicker. And they also replace the the uh, thumbsticks to whatever you whatever. You haven't you got in trouble for that at What's all. That? You didn't get banned for that because, like, I that's remember I, I told you a story that that's how I got banned from uh. These don't have rapid fire or anything. Oh, I had rapid fire, and I locked it on. I left it there, and I didn't notice. It was just fire. You're repeatedly. a dirty cheater. <laughs> <laughs> what else uh, we got? Uh, the Snowblind Border wants to know why you guys are hating on Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> it's too damn pixelated. Well, well I, I'm not hating on it per se. I'm just saying the visual aesthetic is not something that I'm, yeah. I, I'd have. It's like... If you see a woman out in the street and she's just unattractive and you walk by and say, ah, get out of here, and then some guy says, hey, man, she's beautiful on the inside. Yeah. That's what my, Minecraft, did, Minecraft well, is for me. Well, like, not too nice of me. I don't want to like... get through the ugly exterior to the beautiful cream uh, center, okay? It's like she's dirty in bed, right? Dude, when's the last time you saw... <laughs> When's the last time you saw a pixelated woman walking down the street? I'm just curious. It's like, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> but it'll never be any more than that. <laughs> 420, maybe. That's about the only time I see stuff like that. Ganja. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know they had Minecraft tape. weed. What? <laughs> Zach Tape asks, what's your thoughts on achievements and trophies? You guys like achievements and trophies, or you think it's just... Uh, I, I I just think it's part of the. I don't even know. I don't really care about them. I don't well, really go for them. Potentially. I, uh, I used to. When the 360 first released, I was going after them. I I thought it was pretty fun. It was like getting that high score feeling out of like old school arcade games. But over the years, I've kind of just I've started to ignore them because the, it, depending on the game, they either just come naturally. Sometimes you just got to work so hard for them that I don't find it's worth it. Well, I mean, it, it doesn't really enhance your game. It doesn't really change your game, so, you know. It can make a game last longer, though. If you yeah. are all about trying to get that thousand or the platinum, then it can enhance the li life of a game. Yeah. Well, for me personally, like, I'm kind of like you now, Briar. Like, when, when things pop up on the screen, you have achieved, uh, you know, achievements and trophies. It doesn't affect the game. Now, if they were able to implement achie achievements and trophies into the, into the game that would unlock certain things or give you something special for that achievement, I'd be more apt to, to go after them. Mm -hmm. But the fact that it doesn't really change the game, I, I'm not that anal about you know playing a game and getting you know a platinum or getting every trophy. I just play for the experience. If they come, they come. Because sometimes you get a trophy for doing absolutely nothing. Yeah. Sometimes you can just you know walk into a room. You have you know you get a trophy for doing nothing. And so to me, I don't I don't really go after. Them. What about you, not too nerdy? Uh, for me, I used to go after him all the time until I got banned. Like I just said before, once I got banned <laughs> once, I'm just like, that's why. Like if you see my uh, the Spanish 911, so anyone can add me, Spanish 911. If you see that, like my trophy count isn't that high because the ones I used to have high trophy count was better, and like now just like starting all over again. It's like eh, I'll pick and choose the games I really want to get platinum because I want to experience it, but like Infamous, for example, I got Platinum on, but I just want to experience good karma and bad karma. So there's a reason for me to play it more than once. Mm -hmm. But if it's a game that there's certain things, that certain achievements, I might do it for fun, but like the chances are I probably won't. You know, yeah. I, Unless it adds to the story or gameplay, then there's really no point in me doing it. 
So I did. I did make an effort to go after the Titanfall achievement that uh, you had to Gen One by the end of March. You had to like kind of prestige by the end of March mm-hmm. because I kind of figured, hey, that's cool. You know, you can only get this in a certain time frame. It'll be kind of fun to have that. So. Once in a lifetime achievement. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and there were no points awarded for it. It was just, it was a zero point achievement. You saw the the one guy that unlocked the, the highest Xbox. A million. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what did he get for that? Uh, he got, he got interviewed at a bunch of places. Yeah, but <laughs> I mean, like, the the point is like, there's really even with him, like you really don't get rewards or anything. Like you know, I mean, you really don't get too much for doing it. So that just shows right there. Even if you're the highest person. It's really yeah. nothing. Ten That's years from now, no one's going to remember who yeah. the fuck that guy was. I don't remember who he is now, and it's like a couple of weeks later. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, like, what's that guy's name? <laughs> like, What did he do on the Xbox? I mean, you know, like... He's so badass, though. He got so many achievements. Yo, he's so bad. Remember that, the Power Glove? So brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that. The wizard. Come on, people. I remember it. <laughs> it's old school movie right I there. I got another question from Enrico Arambro. What indie games for PS4 are you guys looking forward to to play? I can honestly answer that I have no idea. Those things just pop up, yeah. and I download them almost out of habit at this point, whether they're free or if they cost. If they cost under twenty dollars, I download them because I want to check it out. Yeah, you usually have to wait till it gets close to the next month for us to even know anything. So yeah, but but as of the like ones right I've been now, playing, I've been playing yeah. Sea World Dig. I've been playing, I've been playing a ton of them, and they've been good. Mercenary Kings, I like that game. It's been getting a lot of hate on the internet though. I don't see how. I, I think it's awesome how they put you know the four player co op. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the, the, in, the indie game I'm looking forward to on PS4 is Child of Light. That game looks really awesome. Um, yeah, that's like a JRPG, right? Well, it's a well, I, I, I haven't played it. I mean, I've only seen you know footage of it and uh, you know still images, but from what I've seen, it looks really interesting. I don't know if it can be ca- characterized as a JRPG. You saw it at PAX, didn't you, uh, Natsunori? Yeah, it, it's really. I mean, it has RPG elements in it, but I don't know if it's exactly Japanese. The style is similar to it, but I feel like it's. I don't even know what to compare it to. It's, the it's game abstract. Has, it's, yeah, it, it's definitely out there. It's different the way it is. Um, but, like, speaking of which, I think they come out the same day. Yeah, because I think it comes out April 29th, right, that game, Child of Light. I also, I, I'm interested in uh, Daylight, that, which is another version of Outlast. It looks exactly like Outlast, which is you move around the cell phone instead of a camera and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, when does that game come out again? Daylight? Uh, yeah, April 29th, so it's in nine days it comes out. Oh, really? Was it uh, on the PSN network? It's on, yeah, it should be, it's going to be $15, I guess, or is it free? I don't know. Uh, I think it was, uh, I think you had to pay for it. Yeah, so it's like $15, and yeah. That's not too bad, though, especially yeah. if it's a full game. I heard a lot of people say Daylight was like their favorite game at PAX. Did you get a chance to play that, Nacho Nerdy? I didn't get a chance to play it, but I saw people jump up and get creeped out and stuff like that. It, it was... You know, it's one of those games that it's it's meant to to do that because like, what happens like the whole room and everything is redone, like it's not the same thing every time you play. Do you know what I mean? So and it also it could tell or something by the way how scared you got or something, and it re it makes you even more scared. I, I forgot exactly how they they said they they did it, but it's yeah, fuck this ran- game. It's ran- <laughs> it's ran- it's, ran- it's randomly generated, which is pretty cool. So that that means like my gameplay will be different from your gameplay. So it means I'll get scared more scared than you will. <laughs> pretty much automatic, right? Automatic, dude. That's, that's I'm awesome. just scrolling through my list of games that I have on the PlayStation 4, and it is deep. Have you guys played Blacklight Retribution? Yeah, first like that. shooter. It's not a bad game. Cool. Super Motherload. I had you a lot of fun so with. Fucking quick. Yeah, you do. Super Motherload, I had a lot of fun with. Don't Starve, I know that a lot of a lot of people love that game. I can't mm-hmm. stand it. Warframe, not too nerdy. You've been talking about that an awful lot, and that's free to play. Yeah. Outlast is a, a heart attack waiting to happen. Trying to, I think that one cost fifteen dollars. Is that correct? I think it was on it was on sale. It wasn't like two weeks ago. It went down all the way to seven dollars or six dollars. Okay. Uh, Strider, I had a lot of fun with. That that was a. It's not an indie game, but it was a. Relatively small did you, game. Did you beat it or? No, I didn't. Yeah. No. It's a good game. It's a good game. Um, Dead Nation. I think a couple of you guys. Not too nerdy. You, you put up a video not 
of Dead Nation, right? Me and 9 to 5 Gamers. Yeah, they play, play together, yeah. yeah. Um, Steam World Dig is an awful lot of fun. Mercenary Kings. I mean, there's just so many games. People who... Enrique, you're in the comments right now talking about the problem with PS4 and Xbox One is that there's not enough games, but there's a ton of small games mm -hmm. that are available for PlayStation 4, and it's kept me busy. See, I don't... See, here's the thing. I don't think there's a problem there not being too many exclusives right now. The problem is the consoles just came out, right? And yeah. on top of the consoles coming out, there's going to be so many multi-plats. Like, who are they trying to compete against? See, that, that's the thing. You have to understand. You have to have longevity as a console. And if you release all your main titles now, because that's what people became accustomed to. Oh, they want their Uncharted. They want their Gears. They want their Halos out now. You release that now, then what? Then, then when's the next big game? Like, when's yeah. it going to come? Because you have mm -hmm. so many multi-plats that are going to be coming within the next couple of months that who, you know, there's so many multi-plats coming. You know, they're big games. Like, Destiny's a big game. You have um, all the Ubisoft game, Watch Dogs. You, you even have the Division or whatever. Division, oh, man. The, the That's going to be the one. You know I, mean? I got a stiffy for the Division. There, there's so many games that are going to be coming out that, like, <laughs> who are you trying to go up against? You're going to lose sales if you go up against them. Mm -hmm. So... To me, well, it's yeah, gonna be a hard time. Like those big games too, you know, it gives them more time to develop it and work out the kinks instead yeah. of putting out a shit game that's gonna crash exactly. or be broken like Battlefield Four. You know, there's plenty of games like Bright River said for us to play. I mean, Watch Dogs is right around the corner. We just got Infamous Second Son for the PS4. Titanfall just came out not too long ago. You know, it seems like a lot of people want 50 games at once. Like, you know, they can't do that. And then, you know, we get a shitload of games at once. What's going to go from a year from now, you know? It's going to take developers longer to create another game if they haven't been working on one for a while. Well, here, the, the, wait, what were you going to say, Beasley? The thing I, that I really love about Sony right now is all the love they're showing to the indie, the indie developers, man. They are pretty much making this whole experience on the PS4 an amazing experience because we, we got our AAA titles. They've all come out. The things that we've expected and been speculated about have come out. We played them. We liked them. We didn't like them. But the indies are the things that keep surprising us. Those experiences that aren't touted as AAA experiences that come out and you get a hold of and you're like, wow, this is something so different. This is an amazing experience. And uh, the fact that Sean always loved the indies, I think, is keeping that, that PS4 just on the trajectory it's on right now. It's not slowing down because you're constantly getting you know, new shipments of you know, indie titles. Yeah. And there's, there just aren't that many of them on other consoles right now. The Xbox One, surprisingly, like I'll, I'll log out to the Xbox One and look in the store, and there's just not nearly as much stuff coming out on the indie scene. See, and yeah, yeah. you're right about first-party games, so there's just there's not much. It's really. See, it's I, really I can't wait to see how big our library is going to be within a year or two from just the free games that we get. Well, yeah. I, I think Sony said that there there are 100 PS4 games being developed right now. They'll all be out this year. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm sure 75 percent of that or 80 are indies. Yeah. So, see, the one thing though, the last couple generations that we don't have to, well, they don't have to do anymore, is uh, last couple generations, you always need that game, that one game to sell you the console. No yeah. longer do they need that because now they have all these multi plats that could sell you the console because there's multi plats, like, for example, that Batman, the new Batman game, it's no longer going to be in last generation. Games like that are going to push people to buy next yeah. gen. They don't need their own exclusive. They don't need a waste of exclusive and sell less copies because less people have it and force some people to move up when they can have these net these uh, multi plats do it for them. And then all they have to do once they get enough people, then they make them stay and grab even more people by releasing their exclusives and make sure it's a perfect, you know, game. Like that's the thing. They they need more time for Uncharted and stuff. I highly doubt Uncharted to be released this year. Some people think that that might be the the kill that Sony will do, but let's be honest, they're going to show a clip of it. They're not going to show it's going to be released. If they do it, I'll be amazed. I'd actually rather see that come out spring of next year so we have something yeah. to play. Do you guys think there's any chance of the next Uncharted being uh, a PS3 game as well? No? No, I don't I think, think so. I think by the time we get into 2015, they're, they're eventually going to stop with the last gen. Well, the, uh, actually, the sales for last gen games are already start slowing down faster than analysts predicted, too. Well, I know Ubisoft, they're, they're going to keep pushing out, you know, uh, last-gen games. they got the new Assassin's Creed coming to the, the last-gen consoles as well. But the way Rocksteady is um, pushing out what they their vision on the next-gen consoles only, I respect that because it takes a lot of balls to do that when you know you've got, uh, you know, higher-ups who want more and more money. Put it on the last-gen console too. 
No, that's they, this they, year too, right? The yeah. next. I, I, yeah. yeah, I believe it's so. in, uh, I think what they said December, October, but they have to though because they're they they have an open world game. These open world games, like the developers, they're they're pretty much tired of making last gen games because it limits you so much to what you could do. It's so you're focusing so much and trying to cut do shortcuts here and there and you're limited to the open world. You're limited how big the world's going to be. You're limited to certain objects that have to be detailed. For example, for Batman, they're, they're focused on a Batmobile. They want you to be in that Batmobile and drive around. That's the big thing with this one. You don't have to go from fly from one spot to another. You actually are in a Batmobile from one spot to next. You could do that if you want to. So And it looks like it's going to be fun to drive that thing. Yeah, that so it looks awesome. Man. <laughs> it looks like badass. <laughs> that looks sick. So, like... I am excited. I mean, a lot of people said there's not a lot of games out, but to be honest with you, I don't know what I could do with even more games that there's coming out because then I'm, I'm going to have to pick and choose which games I want to play right now with all the multi-plats. I'd rather be spaced out a little bit so I have time to play and not miss something. Right now I've got a long list of games that I've got about halfway through and haven't finished. My <laughs> Let's Play has kind of like been on hold for about three weeks. Uh, I still haven't gotten to Inf Infamous. I'm still stuck at the Space Needle. I haven't like played any further than that. Uh, Guacamelee, you know, I could go on and on. <laughs> you know, there's just so many games that I've started and I haven't finished. Well, I, I think that the people who want the the first party titles now are just in a rush to judge. You know, they want to judge who's winning constantly. And, well, uh, also they love those first party, you know, yeah. games. You know, I can't wait to play the next. You know, what we were just talking about. What was the game? You game. love it that much. You know, I can't uh, wait to play. Uh... <laughs> uh, Uncharted, thank you. <laughs> Uncharted, I love those games. I loved all three of them, and I'm really looking forward to playing it. Whenever they release that, I will buy it day one, and I can't wait to get you know get into it. So I think people are generally excited to see what their favorite games from the last gen are going to look like on the next gen. You know, I, I'm excited because I can't wait to see, like, all the talent that went into making The Last of Us, what they can do when once they start developing on the PS4. You know, like, that stuff is really exciting to me. I can't wait to see Fallout 4. You know, that is going to be cool as hell. Like, a really, like, a, a next gen Fallout experience? That's going to be badass and... If that came out tomorrow, you know, say goodnight. I'll, I'll be gone the, for a month. You heard the rumors with Fallout 4, right? No, what's up? That they're thinking, because they, they, uh, they had a bunch of domains like, that they, they grabbed for Fallout 4, and they're thinking about it's going to be an MMO. MMO. That's what they're hinting. It might be open world. I hope Fallout. not. I mean, MMO. I mean, multi, massive, multi, like, wait, can I even say it? Oh, my God. Massively multiplayer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, stuttered over here. Somebody that right now is getting their ass kicked in Skyrim online that's hard to believe I think that's what they're, they're testing new Skyrim you, you, oh they are the Skyrim Elder Scrolls, online? Elder Scrolls. Yeah, like the Elder, no, Scrolls, Elder, Scrolls, yeah, Elder Scrolls online yeah it's not doing well no it will do better the reason why it's not doing well is because of the money people don't want to pay monthly for it so the minute they drop it to free to play like it yeah, should have been will. it'll will. do well like same thing the mistake that um I'm hearing it's just not fun though it's just not a fun Multiplayer game. It's not fun because you're paying fifteen dollars a month. Like a lot of people. <laughs> like, like, I'll tell you right now, when it's free, it's so much fun, man. <laughs> and, uh, when is that going to be released on the next gen consoles? Does anybody know? I don't know. Uh, it's, it's I don't know like if there's any plan to do that. A month. Yeah, if it comes out on PS4, PS4 in a month or so, or is it? Yeah. Let me see. I mean, I, I absolutely love the Elder Scrolls games, man. Um, I just don't know how I feel about it being MMO. It's always been like my own experience to have you know other people in there and PvP and seems yeah. like it'll just remove it from what it, it's always been in my mind. But of course I haven't played it, so I don't know. Actually, eight, eight, eight two, three, four. It really kind of breaks down that that immersive experience, you know. June, June, having like some dude running around, like jumping up and down in front of you, spinning around, you know, or teabagging yeah. somebody. I, yeah. Putting June, the mustard 30. stamp on your forehead. It's it's pretty cool because like uh, <laughs> you do. P ver like like P versus P and then like you know, like P versus D stuff like that like PVP like I think it's cool when games are like that. It's just that to, to you have to put a lot of time into games like that. And when you see that you're paying fifteen dollars a month 
after you already paid sixty dollars, I think that's where they screwed up on. If they either said fine, you can do fifteen dollars a month, like you have to decrease the original price something. But when you're already paying sixty dollars, then now you're asking people to pay fifteen dollars each month. Mm -hmm. It's you know they might have got people now for the first month, but like it's free. The first month is gonna be free. So the first month you pay sixty dollars, you get a free month, and then after that you you have to go into membership, which a lot of people won't do. I, I don't see it happening. Yeah, it's not harder even on the consoles where people are already spending, you know, ten dollars a month on PSN or Xbox Live. Yeah, I mean, well, they don't have to. You don't need that actually. For you can actually play. Well, for the the Sony part, you yeah. don't have to have yeah. online for you could do it because it's free to play. But still, like, I don't know. The only game that's ever like WoW is the only game that could pull that off. Since then, no game, multi like MMOs, no games could do that anymore. So well, the ones that did come out with a premium, they all had to, and I mean, over time, go to the free-to-play model. You just it's unsustainable. The Star and, Wars, yeah, Star yeah, Wars. Marvel. Everybody had to do it. And they picked up now too. So a lot of people play Star Wars, but they picked up after once they turned free-to-play. Then people started playing it. People didn't want to pay monthly fee. They just didn't. You know, people pay monthly fees for everything right now. They don't want to tack on another fifteen dollars a month for one game. So I play a monthly fee for freaking Photoshop. You, do you really? Yeah. Oh, is that oh, what happens when you get legally? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I'm just kidding. I paid for mine. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's an area, man. You almost knocked me out of my chair. <laughs> Damn. Uh, pay, it's pay. unbelievable how many like little monthly payments that you have, though. It's like crazy. Xbox Live, PSN... You know, everything is a monthly payment. Your cell phone. I do Gamefly, too, man. I do Gamefly as well. Do you really? Mm-hmm. And Gamefly, by the way, I don't know when this started. I just noticed it now. Maybe it's been there for a while. Like, Gamefly does movies, too. Like, Blu-ray they movies. Do? And they, they, no, they, I saw that. that. I Wait, didn't know that. It's for yeah. the same price? It's, it's, yeah, it's the, same, it's the same thing. It's part of the same deal as the games. Like, you could just rent it. That just counts as one of your rentals or whatever. Hmm, that's awesome. Remember when Netflix used to do that, sending you movies in the mail? Yeah, they still do that. Yeah, they nah, still do. I don't, I don't even think there is mail anymore, is there? <laughs> <laughs> I, I wonder though. Like, I didn't even check that because, like, they also do PC game downloads for free. So I wonder if they'll let you download a movie and count that as your rental. Hmm. I should look into that. Could I be interested in they let me download a movie and it's only like a rental for it or whatever? I did Gamefly for a long time, but unlike Netflix, I found that when I wanted like a game that was brand new, it took a long time to get it. Is it you still have that to, way? Like, you have to leave in your GameCube, though. Like, and I, I have more than one. I rent two at a time. Mm -hmm. So, like, I leave in my GameCube. If you leave it there, then, like, you, you have first dibs, and I usually get, like, two days after release. But it's for games that, like, I'm not planning to buy anyway. So yeah. then, like... I'll buy the one and play that for like two days, three days, and then get the rental one afterwards, and I just jump straight into it. So, mm -hmm. so like that's the way you do it. If you only have one rental, you have to time it out perfectly, man. It takes so long. By the time you return it to them and they give you a new one, it takes a long time. So, yeah. two rentals is probably the best, but that costs like eighteen dollars a month, seventeen a month. So, is that an XP7 headset you're using over there, not too nerdy? This one, I don't even remember. Oh, this is a PX21. I have so yeah. many Turtle Beach headsets, bro. It's like, I go like this to feel which one I'm wearing. <laughs> no, Sorry, guys. I had to let my kids in the house. <laughs> that was your first oh, mistake. <laughs> that hey, scared are, me, dude. Are, I, are you guys familiar with uh, Redbox at all? Yeah. 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 The little yeah. kiosk outside the super uh, supermarket. Yeah, well, they're in front of, like, Walmarts or Kroger. Yeah, like, gas stations or Dollar Generals. Did you guys know that they don't even carry PS4 or Xbox One games? They have them on the website, but the red boxes themselves actually had to call customer service. I think that there's two states that they carry the next gen console, the next gen games in. I could have sworn I saw it in, in my state. Well, let me see. Yeah, I, I mean, here in Atlanta, you'd expect a big, huge city like this to be one of them, but they don't have them at all. That's crazy. I mean, as many consoles have been sold, it's really a no-brainer that you'd have them everywhere. It'll happen soon. Eventually, it'll be, you know, get to the point where more people are playing PS4 and Xbox One than are playing uh, the old consoles. So, guys, I got $50 million, and I'm 
It's burning a hole in my pocket. I'll take Pitch it. me a game idea, and I'll pay for it. Ooh, I don't want to do that. I want to talk to my idea. <laughs> what do you got? You gonna give us a second? You gonna give us a second? No, no, right now, Beeson, go. Damn it! <laughs> um, how about um a roller skating game? Yes. Okay. Now, are you in a rink or is this in, like in, uh, in a an actual, radio? In an actual rink. Uh-huh. Now, okay, your game has, um, there are teams of six. Yeah. Now, oh, is it like roller derby? No, it's online. It's like the roller rink where you go and you can actually do steps and jam, right? Oh, like dance and stuff? Yeah, like yeah. You can get down in the and, roller and, rink? And you can uh, you can uh, create your own character. You can create your own style. Yeah. You can have five of your friends play with you on, on the team, and mm-hmm. you can compete with up to three other teams at one rink at one time. Now, this, so this rink, is like a dance-off? It can be, yeah. Yeah. Can this, can this be a Kinect game so I can put roller skates on in no, my? No, no, that crap. We're, we're, we're talking about nothing but the controller, okay? Now, now the talking about real games. The, 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 uh, the skate rink is populated with real people. It's like a, a community where people can actually walk around. You can go over to the arcade and play licensed arcade games. You can go play air hockey inside there. You got four or five teams of six people on the dance floor or on the skate floor skating around. Um, and and they can be judged by the actual live participants who are watching to see who does what to make sure your moves are all synced and on time. And uh, there is licensed music from real artists. And you can all collectively, you know. So pick I can't two. post it on YouTube then. Well, <laughs> even, if it, even if it's not, but it would have to be a graphically very intense game. Um, An intense roller skater. <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> I would not pay for that game. <laughs> real, okay? Is now, that free to play? Uh, yeah, it better be free to play. Yeah, it's free to play. Free you to don't play make money off of that game whatsoever. You'd probably be losing money on that game. No, no, no. 60 frames per second? 1080p? No, yeah, no, it has to Going be, around uh, in a circle. It has to be 60. Yeah, 60 frames. <laughs> I think it would be. I think it would be pretty cool, man. You got fucking teams of four, four or five people. That's the worst Everybody fucking jamming. game pitch I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Dude, wait, beats the uh, beats the gamer. Can you imagine you saying that in a room full of people and it's a board of people, and then you get that result? Well, he's cracking up at you at the I, end I, of your pitch. You know what? what will you do? <laughs> I, I would act like I was over in in China and jump out the damn window. <laughs> I get, I get, I get, if I saw that come out on PSN tomorrow, I'd download it to check it out. Like, what is this? A roller skater simulator? Hell yeah. I mean, think about it, okay? Of course, you made me fabricate this shit in three seconds, okay? <laughs> All right, God made player, what do you got? I don't even think I can top the roller skating. No, way. no, that's not happening. You might as well not even try. <laughs> Oh God! Oh, God. Oh, um, unless wait, unless you right. do like a, a garbage man simulator, that might be yeah. the awesome. <laughs> life of a garbage man. We're populated with real characters throwing apples at the, the trash truck. No, it'd be cool. Like you gotta go around clean up each garbage that's overflowing. It's like a, it's like a sim. It's like, it's like root beer tapper except with garbage. <laughs> I think the game I would like you to make would be. <clears throat> Let's see. I'm not making anything. I'm the money man here. Oh. <laughs> Are you going to give me the money? Okay. He's just a publisher. Oh, he just wants to publish it? Yeah, you got to be the developer, so what's your idea? Okay. What are you doing? All right. I think I would probably develop... Damn. I'm stuck. I don't know. All right, we'll give you some more time. How are you, Nazi Nerdy? What would you I didn't get no more time. (laughs) (laughs) Thank God. Otherwise, we wouldn't have gotten Roller Rink Sim Time 14. (laughs) Here goes goes the game pitch, ready? Imagine this guy that he's came into hard times, and he realized that his daughter is really sick, and him and his wife can't afford to keep her in the hospital anymore. So he feel, he realizes that he has no more money, and the only thing to do is to go to the bank and set up the best plan to rob the bank. So yeah. the day of the bank, he arrives there. He's waiting in line, and he has everything planned out. He knows what to do, when to do it. 
And then all of a sudden, he chickened out. He went to the bathroom. He couldn't take anymore. He's there. He's splashing water in his face. He looks in the mirror, and he says, I can't do this. He's about to open the door to go back out there, and all of a sudden, he hears gunfires. Oh, and no. now there's gunfires and everything. He's scared. He drops down and locks the bathroom door. He waits a couple minutes after he hears gun, like people screaming gunfires. Then he hears silence. There's nothing left. He opens the door, goes out there, and he sees a bunch of people tied up against a wall. They're blindfolded. He looks around. He sees nothing else, and he just he decides, I have to get out of here. He opens the door. As soon as he opens the door, there's police that says freeze, and there's, there's light shine on him and everything. And he realizes he still has the gun, mm -hmm. and now he's the robber. Yeah. But but he really isn't a robber. So he closes the door, and now the whole plan is that you are the bank robber, but you have to stop police from coming inside instead of escaping. So that's the whole thing. You have different paths from what you choose and stuff like that. Oh, by the way, this can't be. This is already copyrighted because this is my game ready. Just oh, okay. so you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I said it. So that's why I was kind of excited to pitch it. But so what's the game like? What, what do you do? Like, the whole point of the game is you have the police trying to come inside, and you have different objectives, and there's different things. You have to think like an actual robber, but you have choices that you make. That if you do start to commit, like, kill people, you are becoming the, the, the robber. You are becoming the robber. Oh, okay. Or you can cool. do things without killing people. You could try to do things the right way. Now, there's different things that you could do. For, for example, like the hostage, what will you do? You can actually tie a hostage to the door entry so that no, no police could barge through or anything like that. There's different options throughout the game. I don't want to spoil everything, but Can that's the game up? I've been working for. I like that. Yeah. That'd be fun. Can you put on like a blonde wig and try to walk out with? with uh... <laughs> <laughs> but it's called it's. Well, I'm trying to get the name, but it's supposed to be the real inside job. But like you see, like in the game itself, what you see really wasn't what you should believe because obviously there's someone that helped, and the the person that originally robbed it must be there, and you're sort of trying to put the clues together. Okay. One of the hostages that pretend to be a hostage was actually the robber from the beginning. So you get you put things together. Oh, and you spoiled it. Spoiler. No, it's, it's not a spoiler. <laughs> that's actually, that's supposed to be a trailer. Just tell us his it. name. Tell us his yeah. name. Who's no, no, no but like, Bob. you see, and at every mission, <laughs> he has like certain side missions and stuff, every mission you complete, you see a glimpse of what happened that day until everything goes, until like you finally see the whole thing, so. And so throughout this game, you still get glimpses of your daughter uh, being sick. Yeah, you get like glimpses back and forth with memories and stuff like that. Knowing that he has to, he has to find a way to get back. He has to do something, and like you're caught up in between because you can try to escape. You can try to be the one that is a robber to get the money to steal it, or you could try to prove your innocence. But can I go like guns blazing, just take out everybody in the bank and like? You walk could. Out? There's consequences when you do stuff, though. So there's always consequences. I think that's what the game is focused on: is the consequences and the choices that you choose. That sounds awesome. So. I don't know. What, what about you, Briar? I would like a first person, like, uh, not MMO, but like a massively first person shooter game. Maybe like something the size of like Planetside or H1N1 or H H1Z1. H1Z1. Uh, but I want it to tie into Google Maps so you could play. The maps are like your neighborhood. So, like, me and uh, my uh, local friends could play in the neighborhood. It would almost be like Paintfall. Uh, but with, like, big guns and, like, you know, whatever, you know, but I wanted to tie into Google Maps. So, so that, it, actually, it actually be, you could be playing in your own front yard. Yeah, you could play anywhere in the world. If you want to play in the Grand Canyon, that stuff is all modeled already in, in Google Maps. If you want to play in New York City, you know, in front of Gino's Famous Pizza, you could play there. If you want to play on, you know, the boardwalk on the Jersey Shore, you could play there or, you know, wherever, you know. I that, think if you played in front of the White House, they'd come and get you. That'd be awesome, though. What if you could play? And now, you know, Google Maps even has mapping of inside of buildings now, so you could even play inside some buildings. That'd be. I, I didn't know that, really. Yeah, yeah. So, like, like if you uh, want to find Starbucks inside your mall, sometimes they have that for your mall. I gotta check out Google but Maps. I've always Google dreamed Maps. of like playing paintball inside a mall or like inside like a neighborhood. I think that'd be fun as hell to have a first-person shooter in any neighborhood in the world. Throw away your inhibitions, Briar Rabbit. Don't live. Don't dream the dream. Live the dream. And call me from the police. Uh, you know, call me from jail. You, you want me to just start going on a shooting rampage in my neighborhood? <laughs> no. oh, yeah. uh, joke. I think we're supposed to announce that. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. That's not. 
I, I don't want to do that, and uh, okay. I'm going to do it. Disclaimer, the thoughts of Beastly Gamer are not reflected in any of the other co-hosts of Beastly Gamer. <laughs> you just threw me under the bus, you son of a bitch. <laughs> He's talking about gun TV, video game guns, like, game over, oh, we all have fun, we played, ha <laughs> ha. Like yeah, that. but I think that'd be super fun to have, like, because you you never need DLC for maps because you basically it's the real have the world. Yeah. yeah, but you know that's cool. That kind of reminds me of. Do you see the April Fool's joke for Google? Mm-mm. They had a Google Maps April Fool where they said that you got to catch them all the Pokemon, and they actually have Pokemon hidden throughout the world. And like you see people on their phone. It was supposed to be a phone app. I was I was like, well, that would kind of be pretty cool if they did that. Actually, that would be and, cool. Like, there's different locations that you could track as you're looking at your Google Map, and you could say, oh, I just found this Pokemon. Like they they would place them randomly around the world, and like you could say that you caught them or whatever. You guys ever heard of geocaching when people hide stuff around and you got to find a, use a GPS to like find these little like caches of like, surprises? No. And if you so people hide like little things around, like they could be in a city or in the middle of the woods, and then they mark them in this program by their GPS coordinates, and then it's like a game. You go and you try and search for this thing. All you have is the coordinates from GPS, and whatever you find, you get to keep, but you got to leave something else behind for the next guy. Oh, that sounds dangerous. All right, I got my idea for my game. All right, anime player, I can't wait for this idea. Let's hear it. All right. The <laughs> game is going to take place during the Holocaust, okay? Little boy, uh, his parents were killed, and basically the story follows him on his path to revenge for his family. Like think killing cool. Nazis? Yeah, I think that'd be pretty cool. But you're like a kid. You're like maybe 11, 12 years old, and, you know... The Nazis came and ransacked your house. Oh, so you're going to be playing as a kid? Yeah. Oh, that's a cool idea because you're not going to be able to, like, take dudes out with, like, baseball bats because you're a kid. No. you got to go more tactical and, you know, bust some nuts and shit. Like Home Alone style on the Nazis. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Home Alone. (laughs) Home Alone and the Holocaust. This is third person, right? Or is it first person shooter? Because that that level is going to be really low if he's a kid. Like, <laughs> the camera levels can be like low to the ground. You're gonna see people's like kneecaps and stuff if he's that short. <laughs> <laughs> or it can like be one of those really tall ass kids when they're like 11, 12. Sure. But I don't know, that'd be pretty cool. Back in the olden days, you know, because you know a lot of shit like that happened. Families are getting killed, and you know they didn't catch the kid. Maybe they hit him in the basement. He's seen them kill the family off, and you know he goes on his journey of seeking revenge and. Maybe kills Hitler. Who cares? I like that idea. I could kill Nazis all day because it's you know it's basically the best bad guy ever. Yes. Con me. <laughs> you want to hear something funny? So IGN had this thing uh, with uh, Colin and uh, Greg Miller. We're talking about uh, about like touchy subjects of games, right? And they said, oh well, I mean, I still don't think there will be a game where people really focus on the Holocaust or 9/11 because that's still a touchy subject. And as soon as you said, I'm like, well. That just broke today. <laughs> like, today, today, we just broke boundaries. <laughs> but that's that's pretty good though. I like this story. I, I like think, that idea. Yeah. I have decided to fund Beastly Gamer. <laughs> <laughs> I want roller skater rink simulator. I can't wait to see that game crash. <laughs> I, my stimulation is I want it to be on the Kinect so I can wear actual roller skates. <laughs> Can you imagine that with the Wii U, like the Thank game pad touching? In me. Thank you for <laughs> I knew it. I gotta call my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Beast of the Game. You know what would be perfect for that? What? Project Morpheus. Yeah. Think about it. Virtual <laughs> reality. Come on, man. You could be roller skating everywhere. That's that's amazing. I like that. Yeah, idea. FPR, first person roller skater. <laughs> I'll be the first and last. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that I got the deal, you know, Project Morpheus is fine. The man with the money can, you know, make a deal with Project Morpheus, and hey, you know, I'll just take residuals here. Uh, do you guys remember a book when we were all kids called Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark? Yeah. They're making a movie on that, right? Are they really? Yeah, uh, I, I learned about this probably about five months ago. That's how they got stories like the guy with the hook for a hand that yeah, was they, left on the doorknob and stuff. The, the toe and all that. I used to love those books as a kid. Yeah. And, and now that I had a second, a cod made second to think about it, I'd make a game based on that. Yeah. What, are they going to the movie? Is it going to, it's be, going to be a kids it's going movie to, or? It's 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 a it's a movie for adults and it's going to be a trilogy and it's going to go through all the stories in the original book. That's gonna suck. 
<laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I got a question. Uh, you said fifty thousand dollars, right? Five no, million. Like five million. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not a cheap, like fifty. I was cheap like bastard. Five million. I'm That'd like, be a shitty game. <laughs> <laughs> five million. You can't. You know. You can't even like put that on the the PS4 or Xbox One with five million. Really. Five. Fifty million. Actually, I said fifty million. Small indie yeah, game, yes, but if you're trying to make like a big game, no. The Roller Skater Simulator 2014 needs fifty million. Because you know how much you it costs. Make that game with like five bucks. You go too fast, your, you go too fast, your head will fly off. I, I'll put it this way: it costs about four hundred fifty thousand dollars to use Unreal Engine three. That's Unreal Engine three. So imagine Unreal Engine four. It's gonna cost you over a million just to use the the, the game engine itself. So Jeez. I'm just giving you an idea how much game engines cost unless you're going to develop everything from scratch, which means they're going to need a big team, which means they're going to have to use a lot of people. So just well, so you're going to have to design up. your own engine to save money then. <laughs> 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 no, I thought Mr. Moneybags over here had it for me. I'm just saying. I mean, like, <laughs> the skate simulator, man, it's going gonna, to need at least Unreal Engine 4. It's got to be on PS4. And the I, I think it really deserves Unreal, Unreal Engine 8. And imagine, I think, guys... I think, I think that idea just needs to burn. You can have offensive moves. You can pass gas and fuck up the team behind you. <laughs> when they come around, oh, it, it screw up the whole fucking team. Awesome. Now we've got fart man mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> That's the next do, like, Wait, are you going to do like, roller skate, like dance moves and stuff? Yeah. You know, like, you know, I'm talking about what's that movie called? With, uh, what's his name was in it? Roll Bounce. Yeah, <laughs> with a little bow wow in it. Why you got me? Yeah, might have bow wow as a unpl- as a hidden character. He's not making any money now. He'd sign up for it. Yeah, yeah. I bet we could get him cheap. Yes. <laughs> Should we call it a show, guys? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Um, yes. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you guys next week.